There are some people that are born who are dark human beings. Okay, okay. <laughs> What, what being, what being, go. what being oh, gay is like? Uh, 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 being a dark human being who's maybe a serial killer, okay? Uh, a real estate agent, <laughs> and, and also being influenced to, to go to Santa Monica Community College. <laughs> Are you? Serious? I mean, I, I only found out about this like a, like a couple months ago. I, I just, I just, thought, I just thought gooning was jacking off. No, gooning is like, well. There's jacking off. Well, I mean, this gooning. is like, but it's jacking off for like 12 hours at a time and then not coming. Am I wrong about this? Is gooning mm. just harder? Uh, yes, I would say so. No, that's edging. What you're okay. talking about is edging. Gooning is like when you're basically a competitive masturbator. Where Stop. you like masturbate for like 14, 15 hours a day or some shit. Whoa. Okay, that's wrong. And they have like goon caves. Like they dedicate everything to like masturbating. They dedicate their whole lives to masturbating which I, by the way i don't understand because like masturbation is awesome because it's like short and sweet yeah get in get out it's like it's the most fun you can have on your own in the shortest period of time possible like it's just like i, I just don't, uh, i don't know why people complicate it yeah no it's like I, I when i found out what gooning was i was like that was the first for the first time in my life i felt that self-abuse is wrong yeah. And like, you know, perhaps the, perhaps uh, all the scolds were correct if this is what it leads to. Yeah, like what happened to shaming type shit um, here. But anyway, his, his folder was leaked because mm -hmm. he had a fucking he had a, 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 a porn folder on his computer next to his folder mm -hmm. called taxes. <laughs> Weirdest. <laughs> Which is a great was a great place to keep all of your pornography yeah. is in a folder on your computer labeled taxes. So, but the wildest part is he also one of the folders was literally XXX gifts, <laughs> as in like, like he's cranking at the gifts. I guess like I don't really understand that at all. That's so short. Yeah, how do you jerk off the gifts? I don't want to know. Okay, but it's weird. And then beyond that, it was also. Uh, there was a lot of apparently all the 4chan freaks found out like immediately just off the thumbnail alone like the quick snapshot Oh my god, these are, he's like commissioned like lolly art. There's like art of like uh, Like a girl eating a horse's ass and then the horse is like fucking another girl like a threesome uh, No, I think that was AI art which many he's in like his community the, uh, got mad at He's like the Medici family of uh, weird pornography. Yeah, it, it's um they his community got mad at the fact, not because there's lolly stuff there, but because there was some AI art. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, dude, it, I swear to God, it's like a joke top to bottom. It's awesome. Well, how, does that, how, how does your chat feel about Vouch? I mean, I don't know much about it. I know he doesn't like us, so that's basically all I know about him. Um, yeah. He, oh, he, and that and the, and, and, and the horse thing. He's not a, yeah, he's not a, a, a big fan. He's not a fan. Of mine either. I mean, he, he's hot and cold on me. I think like he's defended me in the past, but like. This last, these last couple of years, since, since, um, the the savior of the Christian race, Vladimir Putin, uh, mm -hmm. invaded Ukraine, and I said like he wouldn't do that because that's really fucking dumb. Yeah, I, I, I got a lot. Was, of, <laughs> and took I a big totally, on that one as well. Well, I mean, but also I was like still totally vindicated on the fact that it was really fucking dumb of him to invade Ukraine. Um, but everyone has been like, oh, you love Vladimir Putin, right? He's one of those guys. He's like loves NATO. Okay, so he's a, he's, a, he's a NATO head. Okay. Oh, he's a big NATO head, but I don't really, you know, I don't really. I don't know. That's, that's why that's why I stick to podcasting. You know, it's like the, 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 the streaming and leftist and YouTube world. It just seems everyone's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? Wait, wait, let me see this. Let me see this. Two times the less is Vosh versus Matt. Chris Donald Trump? Trump and other prominent members of his administration are announcing to us that they intend to commit a coup in the United States. <laughs> so. <laughs> I wanted to set, talk about something today. I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about what I heard from a friend. This isn't a, a fancy, you know, a frivolous use of language. This is a capital C coup d'état, a, a traditional seizure of government power by one group uh, against the democratic wishes of the majority. So I heard from a friend who <laughs> heard it from a friend who. <laughs> Heard it from another Trump is stealing the election. <laughs> down, down, down. They have been broadcasting their intentions now for quite some time. <laughs> and it is clear to me now uh, that they are committed to the following plan. Dude, January 6th was my, still to this day, my favorite day of streaming. It's the, it's the best day, best day of television. Dude, I, I streamed it. I streamed the entire process. Derek Evans has entered the Capitol. I repeat. 
Derek, do you know what I'm talking <laughs> Wait, about? Who's Derek Evans? So Derek Evans was, uh, I believe, a West Virginia House uh, legislator. Okay. And he participated in uh, January 6th, of course, mm-hmm. as one does. Yeah, but he could have just been going to his office. Oh, no, he's well, no, no, in West no, Virginia. State, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, he, yeah, had, yeah. he hadn't even, I, I believe he hadn't even been sworn in yet. Okay. <laughs> but it was awesome because I remember, like, going through all of these different, like, personal snapshots, like POVs, and, and like, sifting through it. And then arriving at this beautiful moment, as someone goes, Derek Evans has entered the Capitol saying his full name and then finding out that it was the same Derek Evans that is a fucking state legislator. Awesome. And and of course he got arrested, lost his uh position, all of that, but it was it was phenomenal. I mean not not to not to contradict uh Vouch here, but you know, I, I, I agree with Brace Belden that January sixth was primarily about having fun with your friends. You, oh, yeah. you guys want to go in there if the doors are open? I would love to. I would love oh, yeah. to. I mean, I w- the problem is I wouldn't do it and then expect not to spend some time in federal prison. So I think my, my fear of that would probably keep me from entering any government buildings um, unannounced or, uh, you know. Sort or of, maybe announced like <laughs> Derek Evans. <laughs> yeah. Should, uh, <laughs> yeah. Should, well, yeah. If you announce yeah, it, it's see, not illegal. It's he, not he illegal. Li- he literally said that Derek Evans is in the Capitol. Okay, so oh, so he's referring. Oh, oh, so he's referring to himself in the third person. Yes, dude. Oh, that's amazing. No, no, I'm telling you, I watched this happen oh live my God, and that Googled rules. it and found out so that he, he's a fucking oh. legislator. <laughs> I thought it was just the official uh, the official January 6th, like, you know, uh, like sort of Don Pardo. Derek Evans is now with the Capitol. No, no, it was like straight up he okay. said it, like openly. They should make an escape room for January 6th. <laughs> We're going to relive, oh. the, relive the experience. Well, now it's uh, the escape room is called prison. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, uh, free the politi- free, free our boys, okay? Yep. Gotta yeah. get, we got to get them out. Yeah, free free our boys until the, it's the, the great The great escape room. Yeah. It's fucked up. I, I hate what the, the, the scary Brandon regime has done <laughs> to our big, beautiful boys uh, who are political prisoners. Yeah. Uh. And I can't believe it, and I can't conceive it, cause we're under the gun and Trump's stealing the election. After this, uh, this meme, these memes are done, Wally. You can show us some of your favorite memes. He's uh, he's a, yeah. a bit of a connoisseur. Your meme head? What? Oh yeah. Well, we'll that is we'll what that. is going to happen in five weeks. Things may actually end up being worse than I imagine them to be. So it seems like people are kind of erotically enthralled with the idea of Trump having a coup in November. Am I wrong about this? Uh, do they not no. speak with a virtual ball gag in their mouths? And a, uh, perhaps a butt plug betwixt their cheeks? <laughs> I'm going to explain this to you. And I am going to be right. Just like the fucking right. libs who are getting off on the prospect of Trump doing a coup. Because they're just... Because he predictably is not accepting that he lost, which everyone knew he would. And this hits with the Chapo boys, too. Those uh, oh. smug, doomer dipshits who have completely resigned any possibility of engaging in good political action. This is a- <laughs> Dude, I look, as someone... As I'm someone, engaging in good political action right now. As someone who said, like, listen, you know, uh, uh, Joe Biden is better than Donald Trump uh, leading up to the... Oh. Uh, election. I feel like you are uh, vindicated. I, you know, I, well, I hang my hat in shame. I mean, there's. I mean, like you know, uh, I, 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 as I said in 2020, I said like on the show the other week. I'm not the. I'm not the vote police. I'm not your parents. Like you can decide for yourself if you want to vote, who you want to vote for. So like. When I say I didn't vote for Joe Biden in 2020, and there's certainly no chance I'm doing it again. The thing I didn't do last time, I'm certainly not doing again this time. And people will accurately point out that like this isn't really much of a threat because I wasn't going to vote for him in the first place. But here's the thing. They, they misunderstand. I'm not saying it as a threat. I'm saying it as a brag. I'm just bragging at this point, you know, because I can't, uh, you know, affect. I cannot affect meaningful political change. Also, contra I also, mean, I'm sorry. He is the demonstrator. He doesn't give a fuck about your vote. Yeah, he doesn't care. Over and over again. He's and like, I also I live in New York, me. so like, you know, it's pointless anyway. Yeah. So you know, I. Um, but I, you know, I, I was vindicated. I, I was been totally vindicated. Uh, we'll get M Hunt says we'll get ready to have the most annoying people on earth tweeting at you, and I don't mean your fans. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's Fucking go. Got him. Another case of people uh, jazzing themselves up on a fight that they want to keep having because they didn't get the, the orgasm they thought they were going to get out of Biden winning. They just got this kind of sad, seeping uh, ejaculation. Uh, the- oh, 
God, January 6th was so sick. Only made better by the fact that liberals got like very upset about it, comparing it to 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, obviously, if we're talking, like, which one is sicker, yeah. it's 9-11. Uh, well, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> you should get some angry tweets I'm now. Saying, so I'm, I'm saying it, it was bad. I'm saying well, 9-11, I mean, like, well, si it makes me sick. Yeah, well, I mean, like, thousands <laughs> of people died on 9-11, and the only people who died on January 6th were, like, you know, people whose heart exploded because they walked up a staircase for the first time. And, and, and political hero Ashley Babbitt. Uh, that's true. The martyr. That is true, the martyr Ashley Babbitt. She was she turned into a Shahid on that day, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, I'll say it. Yeah. People are afraid to say it, Ashley yeah. Babbitt. Hero for the cause. Um, okay. The main issue for me is that there aren't really any, like, good pockets of the left, I feel, outside of, like, my community. Oh, he I, thinks, I, I agree. Oh, there we go. Dude, that's me on a stripper pole from should, one of the strip Oh, hell yeah. Dude, yeah, put that on there. Yeah, you put Mr. Beast on, but not me. I'm Mr. Fees, baby. You got... Uh, this You're is, too close to me. I didn't want to get yeah. sued. Uh, <laughs> I, I will agree with Vash on, a, on, on in this regard, as I also agree that there are no good pockets of the left outside the people that I like, yeah, or who like me rather. What oh, there we this? go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yes. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Champagne socialist cock hidden from the world. Shawarma yes. facing the world, legs yeah. open, looking yep. up in deference, leaning away in fear, cock, cock shame. Yep. They fucking got, got both of us. Oh god, I'm I'm this is why I have fear coming on your stream. Yeah. They uh, they clocked. Last time I came on, like I had like, you know, 10,000 15 year olds calling me a CIA agent. And now now I've been exposed. <laughs> now I've been exposed as but you know what? Like this this is no shame in this because okay, I, it wasn't my stream uh, is the reason you uh, have your uh, mentally uh, ill yeah. guys too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, like this is this is I'm not, I'm not shamed by this because of course I will lean away in fear and look up in deference to the shawarma machine. How could you not? Yeah, uh, look at look at look at this. This thing could blow up. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It, I, I'll be honest. Um, there's a lot more freaks since last time yeah. that like now have made it their lives mission to be like, uh -huh, they said, uh -huh, you said don't vote for Joe Biden. Uh, that's right. No, I said I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I don't care what you do. Yeah, it's fucked up, but he did say that, and he should. Unity. It feels like every other big community of leftists has some like huge. And like, I start throwing a few pitches, and it's and the crowd's cr going crazy, and then you know, I thought that would be cool. No, sorry, Matt, Chrisman, and Trey on talk shit about you. No, I didn't. Uh, what, on Twitter or over their podcast or something like that? Right, yeah, no, that Bausch guy, people want me to debate him, and I've looked What's the debate? Like, what would I, you want me to jangle keys in front of his face? He seems like the dumbest people I've ever encountered. Whoa, whoa. Is it uh, jangle keys? I think, uh, well, yeah, one of the worst aspects of like the debate culture stuff that people falsely smear yeah. me with yeah, and say, yeah, I'm say a debate you debate guy. people? Because like I've debated like Andrew Tate and stuff. Like I do it for, because <laughs> I do it for like content. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know what it's for. The purpose is like be in front of a large audience and like humiliate ritualistically your interlocutor. It's not about like using the Socratic method to arrive at the truth or whatever the fuck these nerds believe. And the worst aspect of it is that like, Ultimately, it leads you down a pathway of of uh, inevitably turning every aspect of your life into that same spectacle, right? right. Which is this, and also the, like, oh, let me. Do yeah. you want to see? Uh, okay, what, yeah, do you want to see the update? Because right. uh, uh, Ethan found out about the the horse porn stuff, and he was blasting him on his show, and uh, this was his retaliation. Um, to One. It. Um, is like a threesome with two chicks and a guy. And in retrospect, looking at the two chicks and a guy, the guy is a horse. Okay. It's a horse. And not even <laughs> Secretariat. like... It's No, literally. <laughs> like, it's not even a horse that's like... Uh, not a famous horse, yeah. Like a furry or something? <laughs> yeah, it, it's not even like a, like a humanistic horse. It's not oh. an anthropogenic horse. It is a horse yeah. horse with a horse cock. And the horse is having its ass eat. I saw it, okay? It is... <laughs> It is, all, it is all over the replies of every single one of these fucking tweets. <laughs> yeah. It's not Bojack Horseman. Right. No, it is literally just Secretariat would be yeah. adequate, yes. Knowing now that that artist is a lollicon, yeah, I can see it. 
when I looked at it, I think the vibe that I got was like short stack thick kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, like no. the way uh, like goblins get drawn in porn. You, you'll what? have to entertain me for a moment on this presumed <laughs> share. Entertain him. Wait, wait. Entertain him for you, a you, moment. You know, you know how goblins are drawn in porn. I don't, yeah, like I, goblins I don't get know that. Drawn in porn. You, you'll have to entertain me for a moment you on this presumed shared knowledge of how goblins get drawn in pornography. It's not but you know knowledge. how they're all like thick, this is short deeply stacks, esoteric right? Esoteric knowledge. Oh, no, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, fellas, come on. How many times have you commissioned goblin porn and then people go, "Oh, that's Lolly actually. That's like a little girl instead." And you're like, "Oh, I thought this was a three thousand uh, dollar goblin." Small. I just thought she was small. I, just, I thought she was a yeah. mythical creature. Yeah. You never, it's exactly, you never want to be defending this shit. This is a big L. You ignore and you move on. The, but when you're like in the thick of it, I think you just don't understand. And then you create well, phenomenal yeah, like, content. Yeah, exactly. Like you, like you need to litigate every aspect. And like you take any, 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 any anyone disagreeing with you or, or getting over on you. Like something you need to like have a fucking, yeah, like, li like litigate out. At, uh, it's hours. And I just think, I don't know, like, I, I guess like the broader thing with like political debate is like, I just don't see like the utility of it and I think it's like actually a sign of weakness because it's like there are things that I just don't think are worthy of debate like I don't I don't want to I, I have no argument with you if you think otherwise it's just sort of like yeah like the ethics just, of child yeah, like, pornography just, yeah, like, which just, they debate all the time just move on like you know like I, I don't like there's nothing there's nothing to there's nothing to talk about here like it's okay to it's okay to disagree we, and, and like and then the, there are disagreements that are so profound about like how you see the world that like they're not going to be resolved by uh yeah some sort of Socratic method yeah, it's just I don't know. I don't know what you do. You can debate, you can debate like sports. You know, I think like, you take. I think you take some time off. Like I, I, like in a situation like this, like you have to, like you, you just have to take time off and just like maybe do a comeback, like a year later or something. Because like you can't. There's no way to address this. He'll linger behind you for so long too. Yeah. And another thing I don't like about debate culture is that like uh, the worst thing you can make is an ad hominem. But I think like. <laughs> Or the person advancing an argument is the most uh, important feature of whether that argument is credible or not. Yeah, well, which is precisely why all of those guys that go ad hominem, ad hominem are like number one experts <laughs> at being like, uh, excuse me, but uh, me thinks you bought a house in 2021. <laughs> so that means your argument is invalid. And then it's like a it's like a different version of that cycled over and over again by some of the dumbest people I've ever encountered on the entire planet well because like it's just like there's never going to be like because these things that people are debating about are, are issues of like moral values and culture and like just like sort of like the framework for how you understand the world and like that that these are i just don't think these are things that can be debated or there's any useful uh there's anything useful to be had in, in making a spectacle of it it's either like you have confidence in your beliefs and are willing to stand up for them or like you know know how to defend yourself if challenged but like, yeah, it's it's this instinct to make everything into uh, that everything can be litigated or, or like can be resolved through uh, through debate or conversation. Yeah, it's it's some things you can't resolve, especially lolly. Like getting caught with lolly is is you know the worst thing. But apparently, his fans are more upset about the AI porn part of it than <laughs> anything else, really. Yeah, and uh, you know, we're we're gonna. We're gonna move on from this. You stop horsing around and wait till things are more stable. The naysayers will always be there. Oh, what's up, Michael? Get back on the saddle. <laughs> yeah, he's right. He's right. Um, very logical though. We will logic and reason out of this. There's an Iron Man sailing. Don't have behind you. You've noticed it all. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of Iron Man, that's actually Shawar Machine. Thank you. Shawar Machine or yeah. Iron Man, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> um, also uh, for tech, you're like tacos. I've been getting that a lot lately. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's uh, carnitas, right? Yeah, so it's Car multicultural. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always say, well, I'm a, you guys are gray wolves. I'm a panturonist, which is also a gray wolf of, of a different variety. Or not carnitas, uh, al pastor. And I always say Mexicans are Turks mm -hmm. because of it. because of al pastor. And they're, they're part of the Latino belt on the planet. Yes, which Egypt is also a part of. Yes. Well, actually, uh, my friend Ev from Asian Napoleon pointed this out about the Egypt-Mexico thing. A lot of similarities between Egypt and Mexico, you know? Uh, you know, a dry, uh, sort of desert-like climate, pyramids in both both countries. Oh, the only two true. countries in the world, basically, that have pyramids. I mean, there are other there are others in South America. But, but that doesn't matter. But no. yeah, the, the big ones are in For Mexico. For the sake of this argument. They're the but... big one. Like, the, the most famous pyramids in the world are in Egypt and Mexico. 
And then, you know, it's your last performance, dude. You got to <laughs> well, hit I mean, that. I mean, credit for him for, uh, you know, the show must go on. I mean, that's 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 hard as fuck. Yeah, it's so it's it's crazy. It's crazy that like there's a there's a vibe about it. You know what I mean? Like you watch it knowing what you know about what happened afterwards and you're like, fuck, you know, I don't know. It's just something that you can't really recreate. I guess maybe it's the, the story in and of itself, but. Where the fuck is Feely is the real question. He said he was going to be here. <laughs> uh, but he's too, like I said, he's too busy tweeting about Bethany Mandel, who's now running for Montgomery County. I guess that's in New York. I don't know. But um, <laughs> what is she running for, though? Oh, Board of Education. Of Board course. Of, education. of course. She's going to make it so that, like, if anyone wears a mask, they any child... <laughs> Where's the mask? That tweet of hers about like like the the disgusting like it looked like a like, coffee stain in her mask at the end of the day, and she was oh. like she was like this was always in my mask at the end of one day, and I was like oh really? She's running on killing. <laughs> Doesn't she homeschool her kids? Oh, she's running for the board of education. She homeschools her kids. Oh my god! That's like all these board of education, like all these moms for liberty people, like who don't even have kids, who are like showing up and running for school boards and stuff. Yeah. It's just, uh, well, I mean, it's probably better that they don't have children, really, but it is still weird that they, like... Um, well, they're still really involved in the lives of kids. Yeah. It, it is It is odd. It is odd having that level of interest in children yeah. when it's not even your own. It's odd. No, I, I agree with the chat. Moms for Liberty is just a swingers group, because there's been, like, like they all, they, they're all losing their elections, but there's been, like, a... A number of these scandals were like they've been like and these these are people that are trying to purge public libraries of like any reference to gay or lesbian or trans identities or history or anything like that who have been more or less living openly in like a poly throuple relationship for like quite some time do you um oh also do you want to watch uh one of these yes. like youtube guys that I recently uh, encountered. All right, well, what is it? His name is Tyler Oliveira, okay? I just want to show you something real quick. All right, and I want you to, I want you to, to, to I mean, go his, down this rabbit hole. <laughs> his thumbnails are really great. Yeah, so his last video is, I investigated New York City's illegal immigrant invasion. Okay. Okay, and look at the- I'm living on the front lines of this. Yeah, I investigated Me Mexico's deadly Coca-Cola addiction. <laughs> I investigated the cancer capital of America. I oh my God, is that just a guy covered in tumors? Yeah, I investigated a city that banned police. <laughs> and these are all bangers. I mean, they're getting like millions of fucking views, right? Yeah. I interviewed the most racist man in America. It was him in a mirror. That's right. He's like, I'm. that's me. I'm the most racist man in America. Um, I investigated the city where every drug is legal. Yeah. Look at what this guy like used to do, though. He would do like Mr. Beast ass videos about like... <sighs> Like he would be like, I drove around the country in a Minecraft pig, and then now it's like I went to the fentanyl capital of the world. <laughs> I snuck up to Jeffrey Epstein's island. Yeah, dude. I like, and it's wild. I investigated it the U.S. Mexico border. It is crazy. Border. Like YouTubers, like at the the arms race for views <sighs> is yeah. astonishing. I, you got I investigated Hitler's death. <laughs> death. death. His death. Yeah, he's dude. He went to Argentina. <laughs> yep. Actually, he's based. <laughs> he's, he, he's like Hitler is alive in Argentina. I. Uh, no, I mean, like, I, I guess with, like, Mr. Beast out there, like, I mean, he's he's one or two videos away from, like, building and detonating his own nuclear weapon, which I think would be awesome. Did you see the video he just did where it was, like, they just built that town and then blew it up with fireworks and, like, I don't know if drove it's a real train into a, <laughs> drove I don't a know. train into a giant pit? I think, like, he's doing, it has to be CGI, right? Like, I mean, I... I look I, pretty real to me. I don't understand. Oh, the pit one was uh, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but did they actually drop a train in it? I don't think so. I think the train I, one was CGI. But like, I don't know, but like either he's gonna like uh, pay for the national healthcare system of America for like a video stunt, or yeah, build and detonate his own nuclear device. Yeah, um, and like that—that's what it's like for these these video these YouTube guys, man. It's, which it's is, a hard grind. Which is you know, subsequently both <laughs> I of hunted my politics. near extinct species across Africa. <laughs> I investigated a country where every drug is legal. <laughs> um, I investigated if George Bush did nine eleven. It's like, how is this guy investigating anything? Like, <laughs> anyway, I investigated uh, plane crash. He's like, I, I crashed a plane. I was in a plane crash. I, I investigated yeah. a plane crash by being in one. But yeah, his his shit is like basically, it it basically went from like weird, you know, Mr. B style videos to just like 
increasingly more right wing content. I mean, and like that. That just seemed like the, that is the, that is like grab. It's like the way water flows. You know, yeah. if you get if you get into this gang. I, I wanted to I wanted to hear your your take on it though. Like right, I investigated the city that banned police. This is Seattle, Washington. Okay, potential overdose. Anyone have Narcan? This guy's still following us, by the way. I'm insane. Well, I mean, there's whoa, police whoa. right there. Right? I thought they were banned. Ma'am, are you okay? Home. Yeah, the, you owned him, <laughs> but but like you're kind of right. What's happening? What? Why so is this? Is the, Seattle? Seattle banned police? But it, it's not banned. Seems I wish they had. Wait, it doesn't this video also immediately? I dismiss? guess he's referring to like Chaz, the Chaz thing or something. It's so funny because it's like they'll be like, look at how much crime there is, and then they show a cop right there, and it's like, well, it clearly hasn't solved the fucking problem. Like, what's your solution? Just to like merc every homeless person, which I don't want to. I mean, I yeah. Wait, they can hear everything most yeah. likely. Uh, I can <laughs> hear it. Yeah, it gives like 15, 15 more minutes. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you guys yeah, are... we gotta, I think we gotta, gotta, oh, okay. gotta jet in a second. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. I mean, sans, sans Felix. Yeah, well, it's fine. This is, right. uh, this, Felix does this to me all the time. It's fine. Listeners. Just understand that you guys are just one paycheck away from being out here, too. Racism. <laughs> There's He's nothing right. wrong with being racist. Protest. <laughs> 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 Crime. I am being trafficked against my will. Chaos. Are you on fentanyl right now? He's pooping. Wait, you're taking a poop? And free fentanyl? They're out here just giving out free fentanyl. Really? It's a non-profit. No, this is real? Who wants free fentanyl? Line up. This is how you clean up the streets. Three years ago in June of 2020, Wait, Seattle protests emerged. Free fentanyl? Oh, it's because fentanyl's cop kryptonite. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, they're setting up a protective oh, barrier. Right. So it's like, yeah, like, uh, it's okay. like salting it's around like, yes, your yes, body. It's a circle of salt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you make sure that like the demons can't come near you. That's Urged what it is. Following the death of George Floyd and denouncing racial injustice and police brutality. These protests were met with a heavy handed police response using tear gas, glass balls, takedowns and arrests as protests turned to riots and chaos and looting ensued. In an effort to placate protesters, the mayor surrendered five blocks of of the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Okay. The police evacuated the zone completely, leading protesters to occupy the zone, banning police from entering, and declaring independence as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, CHAZ, later renamed CHOP, as protesters vowed to occupy the zone until Seattle's police budget was cut in half, but after a little over three weeks of chaos, CHAZ had four shootings, <laughs> police rape, budget was Robert. doubled. <laughs> yeah, and also, <laughs> they realized shortly after that, like, maybe they... <laughs> They were like, hey, we don't want the police because we want to be the ones who are fucking shooting black <laughs> yeah, teenagers that was, uh, ourselves. Yeah, that was a real, that was a real, uh, really, uh, like, really a, like a, quick. they really speed, they, they, they did a speed run of society. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, dude, that's what happens every time you talk to a fucking anarchist or a libertarian of any sort. <laughs> like you, uh, you literally come to the conclusion we're at now, but they think like it'll work. <laughs> and then uh, until they're like, okay, maybe we should do the same thing uh, that we have. It's really the illegal immigrant invasion in, in my hometown in New York. Did you see the thing recently where that uh, Curtis Sliwa just like roughed up that guy on Hannity? Oh my God, and bro. It was yeah, like, he's I, a like, hate they, crime. Because it was, yeah, like they said he was uh, like a migrant. It was some guy speaking Spanish and they like tried to, they physically detained him on, on Hannity. I mean, this is all coming out of this incident that happened in Times Square where uh like like the story that got uh, that got proliferated was new york that, like times, new york times is talking about it i yeah. wonder if they side with curtis so far <laughs> not that not that and these, these guardian angel much, bozos who've been around new york since i was a kid and like basically I, i've just seen them loitering around subway stations in their stupid jackets and berets but now they're it's like you know once again it's like i don't know it's just like they're all like like 60 plus year old guys who are you know so it's like listen old people need to have hobbies yeah. okay and i mean i don't know like, the uniforms are kind of cool. <laughs> cool i mean see leftists we just gotta have cool uniforms that's when we it, go out to do vigilantism in that's the streets, what the problem is we need to have matching outfits yeah yeah no that's uh that's always historically that's always been really good for well i mean like well the the the, the sort of inciting incident to all this was like an incident that happened in times square where like the story that got proliferated was that like a group of undocumented men uh attacked it like as a group of nypd cops and like beat the shit out of them yeah which is true but basically subsequent videos revealed that the cops basically just initiated like yeah they, they i mean they started shit with them and they tried to arrest this dude's uh there and like his friends just jumped out they just jumped in and they tooled up these cops yeah. and do like, we have oh, the do we yes. have the Soft full video oh saffron my goodness thank you that's crazy that you made an ice cream sandwich Ooh. with a saffron and everything Oh my that's god. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is so good. I'm glad. 
Here, Here. you want um... Oh, yeah. Mmm. Damn, we shut us up real fucking quick. Mm -hmm. Real nice. Mm -hmm. But... Oh, god damn. Yeah. Uh, it's not that... Does anyone have the, the full video chat? Do you guys have the full video? Like, um, of the immigrants? Um... That the cops come up with? No, there's not a... There's a body camera footage that came out. Which, by the way, such a severe amount of journalistic malpractice. Like, we see a lot of it already. Mm -hmm. Especially as it pertains to, like, Israel-Palestine. But goddamn, bro. The, like, doing this on, like, domestic affairs as well is is so, so frustrating. Um, I mean, I remember, they, like... They ran it. They ran the story as, like, immigrants fucking beat the shit out of cops. Like, what is going to happen... Uh, in, in like New York's immigrant wave of crime or whatever. And then like a week later, they find out that like, no, the cops actually singled them out and like were specifically physically bullying them. Anyway. This is the full video, but I want to know, there was a second angle. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, continuing now with top stories and headlines of the day. On your screen right now, a live look out in New York City, Times Square to be specific. A group of five men have been arrested, accused of attacking a group of New York City police officers. Fox 5 New York's Lizette Nunez live in Times Square this morning with the latest on the charges these men See, now like, I mean, there's, like, there's sort of like a, a hint here that this story was bullshit because... Good morning to I you. I mean, you basically it have to be on angel dust to just make the was... choice to attack police officers. Yeah. And, like, doubly on top of that, where you know you're in the country undocumented, you're like, yeah, what's a fun thing to do on a Friday night? Oh, I don't know, just start a fight with a group of police officers. It's it's phenomenally rare. <laughs> yeah. Like no, I, like statistically speaking, it is insanely rare that like random acts of violence against police officers happen. Um, this doesn't mean that like people don't attack police officers, but like in most circumstances, it's like an altercation. Nobody just like walks up to a cop and is playing like the knockout game or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Which is nobody's hey, playing hey, the that knockout game. The, that should be the new YouTube trend. I investigated attacking police officers on the street. Yeah. Social experiment. But yeah, so they glazed it up like this. Where the fuck is it? Hold on. I'm I'm oh here. And All then I'll show you what the camera. full video looks like. Ultimately Context put the surveillance video of that attack out to the public as well as pictures of the suspects, which they believe led to additional arrest. Arrest after this video shows a group of men assaulting officers in Times Square. The incident taking place Saturday around 8.30 in the evening. According to police, officers tried to break up a disorderly group on West 42nd Street. When police... I have two rules, bro. <laughs> Are Israel, Israel and cops, whenever they say, like, uh, the story is one way, I'm immediately like, no, nope, I, I don't believe it. And they were trying to... Uh, yeah, break up a group of individuals standing around West 42nd Street at 8.30 on a Saturday night. That just is Times Square. That's what people do there. Yeah. But they were speaking Spanish. Yeah, they were they were standing around and looking scary, speaking in tongues <laughs> that they couldn't to take understand. The person dressed in yellow into custody. That's when things took a turn and the group began attacking the officers. Several <laughs> people repeatedly punched and kicked the officers in the head and body. Police initially arrested four people and then a fifth person on Monday. They faced charges including oh, assault on a police out, officer, out of the, gang the assault, yeah. and disorderly yeah. <laughs> Finally, you want to pull up a normal According chair now? Post, those who were arrested and charged are migrants who were then released without... And then they were released and it, it subsequently created the hardest photo of all time. Have you seen oh, the, the, double bird, the, uh, yeah. the double bird photo where he's just like, yeah, fuck you guys. Um, and of course that even made that made the fucking suburban small business tyrants way angrier um, Way more fascist than they previously were I mean, uh, I think it's just people's like repressed need to like because no, nobody like I, everyone like has such a deference to police Especially if you're white because like yeah, you know that they uh, are there to protect you But for the most part people average people are just terrified of the police They want they want as little to do with them as possible and usually like you know When you see the berries in your rearview mirror, you're sweating bullets So I just think people like get so angry at it because like when they when they see someone punch a cop You're like he should give the death penalty because I think like there's a certain part of themselves that like really wishes that they could have punched a cop at least one time in their life and gotten away with it. Yeah. Um, 
so here was the here was the full story. You know, make make of the make of the situation what you will when you realize that like uh, maybe maybe it's a little bit different. The Bobby, you fucking see that Bobby? Are you having a laugh, mate? This fucking bastard. I don't know why he just has like a very constable look to him. <laughs> Oi. Look, look. Oh, dude. No, that's that's sick, fall. man. That's sick. Why are you press him like that? Why did he grab him like that and separate him from like the baby stroller? I don't even know if there's a baby in there or not, but like regardless. Yeah, and then his homies come in and start fucking wailing, okay? And honestly, you got God, son. That's it. I mean, that's how I know that they're they weren't born in this country, because like I don't know, like even even my even my mother, I wouldn't I wouldn't dare uh, try to attack a cop because I just assume they'll kill you. I've said this before, like at protests, you only see more civilized countries where at protests yeah. they like fight back against cops. Because it's like even, it's even. It's like at the end of the day, you're still a fucking human being. I think it's ridiculous. Like, Germany gets a lot wrong, right? And I'm obviously not going to defend Germany for any particular reason other than this one fucking law where it is legal to escape prison. I, you know what? I've thought about this so many times, and I feel like if, if, you, break, if you successfully break out of prison, I think, like... And then it's like, I don't know, if, you, if you're able to successfully escape from prison and then evade capture for like 48 hours, I think it's like <laughs> sets back to zero. Your <laughs> felony is just wiped out. You're officially free. I feel the same way about high speed pursuits or just even foot chases. Yeah. I feel like they can chase you for like five minutes. But then after that, because it's like, how can you make it legal when it's such a natural human instinct? <laughs> yeah, no, that's literally the, no, <laughs> yeah. that is the philosophical reason why. Technically, in Germany, if you are in prison for one reason or another and you escape prison, um, the only crime they charge you with, like the only additional crime they charge you with, is actually like it's like some weird German law against cutting in line or something. No, 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 theft in uh, theft of state property because you're wearing oh, clothes. Wow. Okay. So if you escape so if you prison get naked, naked, yeah, there's no additional charges if you get caught. You just have to carry out your sentence yeah. normally as you would, just like Andy Dufresne. Yeah, because ultimately they're saying like. Just like you mentioned, it's your, you know, it's the most natural human instinct to not want to be in captivity. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or to evade captivity, you know? Well, do you get charged for stealing the clothes? Oh, <laughs> yeah, but that's only a misdemeanor. They won't send you back to prison for that. They'll yeah. just send you a Felix, bill. Felix is here as well. Oh, back Felix to is back. Here? Look right. at that. All right, well, this is, uh, this is good because I think I got to leave now. Okay, well, yeah, we're. we're uh, taking... Want me to go let him in? Uh, sure. Here, I just unlocked oh, okay, the door. Okay, cool. I think. Yeah, I mean. Yo, doors open. Doors open. Please look it up and show. There's a large list of things you can't do while getting out of jail. Oh, in Germany, there are things you can't do while doing it, though. Yeah, you probably can't fucking like kill someone. Like that's not. They're not like it's legal to kill people. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ, Kaya. It's going crazy. Is there any food left? Yeah, there's hella. Wait, really? Yeah, there's hella food. They didn't even eat all that much? No, no, that's all my new merch that hasn't been released yet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's because there's bread. But it's, it's like all bread. for uh, photography and stuff, so I can't give them to you, unfortunately. Okay. No, I'm not going to leak it, chat. Leak it, yeah. I have, to, I have to look at it. I have to look at it and see if it's good or not. Whoa, Kaya, whoa, whoa. calm down. Technically, you get charged for theft for leaving the prison uniform, but it's not that much of a punishment. Yeah. I want to watch these cops get pieced up, though, because, like, honestly... Wait, what? Wait. Can you say that to them? Why is there no audio here? I think, like, maybe... Because <laughs> you're using copyrighted music was playing in the background. <laughs> 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 Dude, what the fuck are they doing? They're like, are they corralling like random people that they're like, that, that, that are migrants or something? Like what's happening? Also, how do you know who's a fucking tourist and who's like seeking asylum? Like, it's New York. 
you know, like those people who come up here on the streets, like trying to sell tickets to comedy shows, and they like you're in Times Square, and they're like, "Hey, do you like to laugh?" Do, never respond. This is they're all cops now. This is all undercover. <laughs> if you say yes to comedy, they arrest you on the site. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, dude, I I believe it too. Goddamn, dude, Chapo Travo is those fake news. That's why information. That's why this is the only good leftist mm -hmm. uh, uh, broadcast out there, leftist community out there. Um, I uh. The guy in the yellow calls a cop Ugly Betty right before he grabs him. Oh, that's awesome. That's, yeah, you can't. That's the one thing you can't do is just hurt a cop's feelings. Your death penalty, you know? Whoa, Ugly Betty. What's 4 1? Other side. Other side. What do, you, what do you mean, vamos, motherfucker? What are you talking about? Vamos a la playa. Like, what are we doing here? Why are they leaving? What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. You don't know. The Latina Bell. The Latina Bell. No, West 4 1. We hope. West 4 1. West 4 1. We hope. West 4 1. We hope. Let's go. Move. Move. West 4 1. Why do they keep saying West 4 1? Vamos. Is he like selling something? I don't know. West 4 1. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like the other part of me, the boomer part of me is like, well, they are fucking annoying Zoomers. So, like, <laughs> they look like annoying Zoomers. So then immediately I'm like, maybe the cops should handle them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, that's what happens when you get older, chat. That's when you're like, okay. Being, being a Zoomer in public, immediate death penalty, uh, arrest for you, go to jail. I don't know why he wants the cops to leave. Yo, what's video. good? Felix Biederman in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, it took Felix, me a while to get here. Yeah. Uh, Felix, you, you know, uh, have you met Wally before? Oh, no, hey. We just had some uh, excellent shawarma prepared yeah, by this There's some more food yeah. as well if you want to yeah. oh, warm it up. Yeah. There's ice cream too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we're watching the, the New York, uh, the, the, the asylum seekers that were like getting uh, bullied by the cops, and then like the cops were. The cops tried to like apprehend them, and then they got pieced up. And yeah. then, and then like everyone was like, "We should kill every asylum seeker." Yeah. No. I mean, this is one of those things where, like, I mean, like no, no one who. Sorry. Oh, good, good, good catch. <laughs> yeah. Very good catch. <laughs> uh, it was one of those things. I mean, like the the people that reacted to it initially, they don't care. They will just say this anyway. But you know, generally, a good reason why. Um, just seeing any random video from one of those accounts is called like breaking 911. Yeah. You should wait like two days before you make any extrapolation. Yeah. But it's also, I mean, I was saying this earlier, but like it's the IDF principle. It's just like if, if the IDF is the only account that has like first hand information, and if it's the cops that are like giving first hand information, I don't believe it until I, until I get like, Second sources, third sources, like some kind of verification. I'm gonna wait. Yeah. All right, boys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, they're gonna head home, but I'm gonna hang out with you. Hang out with y'all for a little longer. Oh hell yeah! Take the car back. He's dude. Will is enjoying yeah, streaming so much. In the house here. You yeah. enjoy yeah. Twitchy yeah. show yeah. so much that you're staying the extra. <laughs> yeah. Oh okay. All right. I see how it is. I like that. Everyone in here does the do hard bro style. Where the booze at? Oh fuck. Mountain Dew is the I've nectar. A, I, have a, I have a medical condition. I can't drink. Yeah. All, all your viewers are like teenagers trying to get me to buy alcohol for them. Bro, no, no, that's like that's like 2020. They were teenagers. I don't think a, a lot of a lot of my community is older now, for sure. Like I think uh, back when like Zoomers cared more about politics because Donald Trump was like so captivating of a figure. There was definitely a, a younger audience in here. Now they're all fucking watching Kaisenat. That's like our audience. When we yeah. when we started, they were forty seven, <laughs> and now they're all in hospice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever watch those auditor videos? You ever like those videos? Oh, I love those videos, dude. Are you kidding me? Trespassing. Yes, First Amendment auditors yeah. are my favorite type of videos to watch. The new the new meta for me is um. Wait, hold on. The new meta for me is uh watching. Where the fuck is it? I had it open earlier, like, uh, like detectives, bad cops, like police, like, or, or, uh, I guess like police arresting people too. Like this lady had it coming. Cause those accounts are so funny. Cause, uh, there was like one account that we were watching the other day and the dude was like this 87, he was making an argument that this 87 year old grandma that was being like physically violently arrested 
was actually a Karen who deserved it. And it's like, it's so distorted. Like, I, I look at it, I watch shit like that specifically well, because do? I want to make yeah, fun of... Yeah. Oh, she was 87 years old. She, um... She was apparently complaining. <laughs> yeah. Lost. She was complaining. Uh, she was complaining about like a dude's like dog that she that uh, we don't know. Bullies. We don't know if it was a service dog or not, but he said it was a service dog. And okay, I'm gonna go on limb here and say it probably wasn't. Yeah, yeah. no, that is that no, is that is fun. fast become like the number one th thing people lie about. It used to be like um Best some vid. some connection to 9/11. Oh, I had a step parent. That this died is Emma. Hunt sent this in and said, "Best vid. This is mine and Felix's right. son." Cheers. Bye bye. Oh, I know it's really. We've watched this before. The one wearing the fucking uh, OTF. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, this yeah, is my old. This is my, old this this is my oh. legitimate kid. He's the right age. This I conceived him in 2015 on a floor Michael mattress. Michael Fritch of the Little Egg Harbor Police Department in Ocean County, New Jersey, stopped his vehicle and approached a young man who was walking on the side. Dude, look at how thumb-like he is, too. <laughs> God, just a perfect fucking thumb, dude. Look at this guy. Out of the road, after the man, under, like, who we will refer to as Mr. Walker, the gave yeah. the finger to Corporal Pritch. The interaction was captured on Corporal Pritch's body-worn camera. Corporal Pritch? <laughs> Why are you giving me the finger? <laughs> what? What's your problem? What? Why are you giving me the finger? I'm walking away. Huh? Am I free to go? Why are you giving me the finger? Am I free to go? No. Come For here. what reason? Why are you giving me the finger? What's your problem? Am I free to go? No. What's what, do you mean? have a problem? No. Do you have a problem? No. You don't have a problem, then we're... I can leave. Why are you, you giving me the finger? When you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out of here, bitch. Oh, I yeah, love it. Yeah. That is so good. He yeah, said, take is... your ass back to Cherry Hill, bitch. We don't do that fuck shit around these parts. And I love, like, uh, <laughs> the, the Corporal Pritch is answering this kid's question, but yeah. in his own behavior. Yeah. yeah. I don't... Well, he's he thinks he can reason with this child. Yeah. He thinks he... But this child is unreasonable, okay? Yeah. Let's see where it goes. What? Get over here. Is that a no. lawful order? <laughs> yeah. For what reason? Because you're giving me the finger. That's legal. No, it is. Yeah, I Says who? Says before. it all. Pull up the law. Huh? Pull up the law. What's your name? What's the law? What's your What's name? The law? What's your name? How old are you? Corporal Pritch claims that it is illegal to give him the finger, <laughs> and therefore he can lawfully detain Mr. Walker for doing so. As we have discussed before on ATA, the Supreme Court held in the 1971 case of Cohen v. California that, quote, absent a more particularized and compelling reason for its actions, the state may not, consistently with the First and Fourteenth Amendments, make the simple public display here involved this single four-letter expletive a criminal offense. Likewise, as the Supreme Court explained in the 1989... Like, he... Dude, by the way, I feel like Texas is the first state to pass this as a law. Like, it, sh it is a hate crime to fucking yeah. flip a cop off. Yeah. Like, and, and deserves the death penalty. <laughs> In case of Texas versus Johnson, while, quote, the First Amendment literally forbids the abridgment only of speech, its protection does not end at the spoken or written word. Conduct may be sufficiently imbued with elements of communication to fall within the scope of the First and Fourteenth Amendments. The court also stated that, quote, in deciding whether particular conduct possesses sufficient communicative elements to bring the First Amendment into play, we have asked whether an intent to convey a particularized message was present, and whether the likelihood was great that the message would be understood by those who viewed it. Although the Supreme Court has not ruled specifically as to whether raising a middle finger constitutes protected speech, the gesture nearly inarguably satisfies the test for expressive conduct outlined in Texas v. Johnson. And courts that have reviewed the issue have I generally this concluded about, that like, it is uh, protected these types speech. Of videos. How much money are these guys spending on stock footage? <laughs> I watch, I watch like a lot of videos where it's kind of like this, but it's like, you know, the 30 scariest crimes ever. Yeah, but it's like... And, and it's just <laughs> yeah. like, it's all like like stuff like this. Well, yeah. And they'll be describing like a grisly family annihilation, uh -huh. but it'll be like people in a boardroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm well, like, what are you... How, stock, how are you paying for all this? Stock, getting footage, getting stock footage, footage of a Herodin wife with like a rolling <laughs> yeah, pin? Yeah. Well, you guys have the annual license and then your investment pays off yeah. in the long term. Also, he's I got, got, yeah, yeah. got 8.4 like, million so views expensive. in this. Uh, wait, Felix, I, yeah. okay, I, Felix, I know the video, you're, uh, you're going to know the video I'm talking about. I don't know how to search it, but is there a way we can find the candy cop? The cop who's... Oh, yeah, Officer cop? Delicious. Uh, officer Type Delicious. Officer yeah. Delicious. Wait, this one, Officer Delicious? Yeah, this yeah. is the feel-good video of the year. It's very short. 
Delicious. Yeah, it should be on here. Yeah, first results. <laughs> yeah. For, yes, yes. Oh, yes. I'm, very I'm, wait, good what call. The fuck? We got my man off with the delicious right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh. <laughs> You talking about my nickname, Candyman? <laughs> we got my man off with the delicious right here, man. I just, oh. He's got a, he got a lollipop. No, he got he got cooked. He got absolutely he got, he got cooked. Dude, dude. You can yeah. you can like you cannot be eating candy and no. an authority figure at the same no. time. You can't like you can't eat a hot dog either. You, you gotta or a corn cob or something like you gotta eat it sideways. You can't, especially like when you're that young. He's like a brand new cop, and it's like you are way too young to eat candy on the job this is worse than, that's worse than getting shot your first day on the job yeah. Yeah. no one yeah he they have to transfer him to like a new city now <laughs> she can't be crying yeah he can't he can't be a figure of authority ever again they they owned him they owned him too hard face your biggest fear to win eight hundred thousand dollars here's that doctor insanity video I don't think this is the Dr. Insanity video, dude. I think this is just Mr. Beast. Is Mr. Beast just like killing his friends now? <laughs> yes. Is that what this video is? <laughs> we'll see. Mac is about to experience the scariest moment of his life. I'm just gonna let you know, I'm not afraid of anything. We'll see. You cannot scare me. Seal them up. You have to survive 10 minutes with a thousand spiders to move on. Oh. Release the spiders. Oh, oh yeah. Start the timer. This is literally a fear factor thing. The reason we're doing this is because Max said no matter how hard I try, I can't scare him. Would you say you're scared now? Just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, he's kind of cooking. And this is only one of many fears Mac will face in this video. Oh, God. And if all he can successfully face all of the fears, he will win $800,000. <laughs> Burying him alive? This yeah. was okay, but $800,000. But $800, <laughs> Way more gnarly than I thought it would be. Three, two, one. Lift it up, lift it up. Oh, I can't yeah. believe he ate that, bro. That's crazy. First Let's go! No, no, that's just the first one. Look at those all of these fears. Those if he wants to... Spider, so. Yeah, no. But, like, oh, you act like you're going <laughs> to fucking sit there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd tank it, dude. If it was me, dude, if it was me, I'd fucking tank that shit. Spiders are nothing. <laughs> Win the eight hundred thousand dollar prize. See, I, okay, I know I you're blindfolded, but trust me, just walk up this ramp. With a thousand spiders, a, a room with oh, one mosquito in it. Are you taking it me? Oh, really? I'm being I'm exaggerating. No, 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 no. I thought you were. I really, I really do hate mosquitoes. I thought you were gonna do that, like um, um, statistically, um, mosquitoes oh, carry oh, way no, more disease. I'm not disease. malaria. They just annoy oh. me. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought you were doing. Okay, you can hold on to it. That's cute. Wait, what the fuck is he gonna do? Oh, okay. Oh, Mac, dude, that's so. Take sucked. off your blindfold. Welcome to challenge number two. Oh. The next fear yeah, is the fear scary. of heights. You're gonna or stand on the. It, you think it's scarier or is it less scary, you think? I think it's kind of scary because you have no concept of when it's gonna end. Yeah. You know, you're just falling and probably a second feels like hours. Or like you have, or even worse, you have yeah. no, you have no knowledge of like when you're gonna be dropped. So it could happen. Yeah, any yeah. That would yeah. be terrifying. Is that Mr. Beast Abu Ghraib? But like he literally did Abu Ghraib torture to himself to become famous. This is something <laughs> yeah, that people forget. Abu what is that? You don't know what Abu Ghraib is? No. Damn, bro. God damn, it's like the famous uh, American uh, the prison where they tortured all the fucking uh, uh, prisoners of war and shit and like random civilians in, in uh, it's in Iraq, right? It's not yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, it was, it no, no, <laughs> no, the, no it, I mean, the people running it were the opposite, they were the opposite of the Illuminati, yeah. the people running Camp X-Ray, it was like a fetal alcohol syndrome woman and then she was in a love triangle with two like repulsive other soldiers and they were all military police which is just like you yeah. know they're like the prison oh, guards yeah. uh they're they're just like you you can't get any other job in the military if that's your job Damn. like you are too stupid to like work artillery or anything else so <laughs> michael, they, michael said but enough red scare enough about red scare <laughs> lindy england was you know she was like one of those one of those people where it's like you know the chromosomes are wrong yeah i don't know if it's too much or too little but like they didn't get it right yeah and yeah she was uh her superior she actually got married to him. Uh, I think they got divorced after she went to prison. But anyway, I did not like, know this deep lore yeah, that you were in. 
I'm well, a I'm a I'm a Wikipedia warrior. Felix yeah. is like Abu Ghraib is really a story about relationships. Yeah, I love that you. <laughs> well, no, it kind of it, it kind of it, it kind of is. It kind of is. is. It it kind of is. is. Because like, like Charles Granger was like he was a surprise surprise a prison guard before he yeah. was in the military, and he was clearly the, like the sadistic ringleader of this. But the, the real ringleader, the Bush administration, folks. Yeah. <laughs> For doing 9 yeah, 11, not even yeah. not even Abu Ghraib, but 9 11 in general. Famous, um, I don't think he's in the photos, but he was at Camp X Ray. Uh, Abu Bakar al Baghdadi, he was at that at that facility. The the Wait, late oh, head of ISIS. You think they tortured him? They Prob got a couple. Probably, they, yeah. they, they got a couple in them. Probably, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how. Well, and you know what else happened? ISIS. That's how. That's how Obama made ISIS. Kind of. I, I live. I, I like. Um, my favorite ISIS member is he's what he's like. Do I have to choose one? Do I have to choose yeah. one? Out of out of so many. <laughs> well, no. You if you see this guy, you'll love him too. Wait. Oh, is it Jihad Joe? <laughs> No, no, no. It's the it's the guy who was who was like a pretty high up. Uh, he was like a, a general in the Republican Guard, and he just look. He's like a ginger. The, oh, you know the one I'm that looks like about. Walter White. Yeah, yeah, the Walter yeah, White guy. Buff, yeah. Yes, dude. Yeah. You, Wallet. Well, you definitely nice know. You you definitely know. I thought it was just a meme. No, this guy, bro. Yeah. I didn't know he was ISIS. Yeah, the former Iraqi general is believed dead, but looks like Walter White, right? Iraqi officials yeah. said on Friday. Uh, that uh, a former right-hand man of Saddam Hussein, Izzat Ibrahim al duri had been killed while fighting for ISIS north of Baghdad. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah, and he wasn't even like a lot of guys in ISIS. This is he the coolest thing that the government did, by the way. I will just, I'll stand on that. The, it, the deck oh, yeah. of card cards shit, yeah. The playing card stuff was like something that like a, a character in like a Frank Miller comic would do. Yeah, you know, like if you it, and in to you know to that end, like you shouldn't do any of this. But if you're going to do this, that's kind of cool. Wait, wait, like I don't. Agree I, with I, it. I had a deck of these same playing cards, except it was all members of the Bush administration. Wait, really? Because that's how much I was against the war in Iraq. I actually did have one of those. No, yeah, that was a, that was a big <laughs> lib big, item. Big oh, we dude, had, I I love that. ticket. Yeah, dude, we of course. Oh four. <laughs> we of course had that in our house too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bush Bush era liberalism is my favorite. It was got to come you, back if there's any hope for the Democratic Party. Oh yeah. Uh, you don't realize how fun it was. It was like. Um, you're like your mom's other lib friends. That's the first time I ever saw Alex Jones was when one of my moms... Oh, because he was anti-Bush. He was anti-Bush, and yeah. one of my... Libs used to be so cool. One of my mom's friends sent us a, an Alex Jones video about how, like, the attack on the Pentagon was faked. And it was just... It was such a, like, good time. Yeah, now, like, like Blue Anon now is, like, way more boring. Well, so yeah. is Alex Jones, though. Like, yeah, yeah. Alex Jones is now talking about basically one step removed from advocating for like tort reform or some shit like you went for yeah. he went he, he went from like i'm gonna talk about our overly litigious yeah. losses yeah. system of law yeah, yeah. guys it's, it's, today we're talking about school choice okay that's right we need those voucher programs going immediately i just finished a section in the conservative media project oh, I'm working nice. on about this exact same thing that like jo the closer jones got to mainstream politics like a his life fell apart the, the moment that happened, like all the consequences came tumbling down, but also like, yeah, his show got way worse. Yeah, but he also like, got like mass appeal, probably. I assume like he's probably infinitely more moneyed up after like the Trump bump. You know what I mean? He was doing pretty well before that, though. Yeah. Why uh, did he make the deck of cards? It was to give to soldiers, yeah, because you know, these are all the like the the high value targets of people that they wanted to capture alive, for, yeah, you know, deep, you know, deep yeah. interrogation or whatever. So they just wanted they wanted uh, the average the average grunt to be able to recognize these guys by eyesight. So give them a deck of playing cards, you know. Oh my God! I didn't see Holy this. Holy shit! One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like minting their cards and trading them and shit. Yeah, the Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. This guy was awesome because he wasn't. Like he he wasn't really into like the religious element of ISIS. Like he could take <laughs> he it or just leave into it. the evil part of it. Well, kind of. <laughs> it was more like an ethnic thing. It was like holy shit. Like I'm you know Sunnis are gonna get like uh, flattened out if we don't like start making making evil videos. <laughs> yeah, that was Not a lot of people in ISIS though. At least the uh, out of Iraqis <laughs> that joined. <laughs> 
I love your uh, yeah. You don't understand. There's there's a uh, there's nuances to this. A lot of a lot of Iraqis join because they were like, it's fun. It's fun to have with friends. Yeah. Well, they, they, I mean, it was more not universally like a lot of like the foreign volunteers, like people who, like especially people who came from like the UK oh, yeah. that was religious, but yeah. like. Uh, I don't know. There's no way to quantify it, but for a lot of people, it was ethnic. Some people just wanted to lease a Dodge Challenger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the, 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 the people that, the people that definitely joined from like European, from Europe or from America, I guess, or mostly Europe, they, those are like all the, the revert zealots for the most part, which like, I know I don't. I rarely ever uh, talk about like Salafis in the UK or anything like that, but there is a lot of activity on that front. I f I feel like on Twitter, yeah, who like yeah. they'll like get mad about like Lebanon having being like multicultural yeah. or whatever, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You live in London, like yeah. Every time I see a tweet, what? In, every time I see a tweet in English that's like. Shia worship by crawling on the ground like snakes. <laughs> it's always like location, London. Yeah. It's, ne it's never anywhere else. It's always someone from fucking London. Like, what the fuck happened? It needs to be studied. Like, the Londonistan memes are like, they came alive somehow. Like, I don't know. I At first, I thought it was like Katie Hopkins' is like imagination. And then I do sometimes see some motherfuckers who are like way more right wing than like. Who's the that? most like right wing dude I know in Turkey, and I'm like, where did you come up with this? Yeah, uh, who's the guy? Like, it's it's the cleric uh, for the, like he's uh, like London based, obviously, and he's the guy who always does these videos where he's like, Drake is turning you gay, brother. Can you guys see this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, does there, uh, dude? Do you guys gotta have that shit? You, you guys, so one of you in the chat knows what I'm talking about. It's not uh, Muhammad Hijab, I don't think, but he's like. Muhammad Hijab is the one who's like also very aggro, but nowhere near as aggro as like the the dudes that we're talking about. Yeah, uh, like some of those guys, I feel like they're like MI five assets for sure. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. Oh, is it Ali Dawa? This guy. Let me see. Oh my God, he's one point two million. He has one point two million followers. Oh Jesus Christ! The the Wow Project. Okay, hold on. Kim Kardashian mocks exactly. Gazas. Okay, Actually, everything's gonna be Israel. I want to see like something that's not. Do most popular. <laughs> oh shit, that's a good one. Let's see. Ali Dawa confronts Britain first. Okay, well that's is it Ali Dawa chat? Mohammed Hijab is no Salavi. He said it before. No, I know Mohammed Hijab is not like that. That that video that's full, like full and uncut is referring to cock. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan attacked for reading the Quran. It does go hard. It's no Sami Yusuf, though. Oh, I met that Batman and Robin. Hate, full of hate. Sister Lindsay this is, this is not the guy I'm thinking of. Loki looks Maxi my... What? What are you guys fucking saying? You guys are such fucking weirdos. Why did I read that? Jesus Christ. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, I thought you were talking about the video. Someone tracked down the succulent Chinese meal guy? No. Um, we're not going to do that. Uh, does, uh, uh, I think of a, the Yemeni propaganda movie videos are they're dropping. Those, those are awesome. Yeah, hard. those do those go are hard. Amazing. Dude, we're, we're not allowed to talk about Yemen here. Oh, everyone, okay. everyone always, well, we can't. I'm just kidding. But everyone gets so fucking mad. Like, all of the, all of like the horse porn defenders online have like antennas. They go, Brr! Oh shit, dude! Uh, I can't believe he fucking interviewed that dude, Tim Houthi right, Chalamet. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. That was a, that was a great scoop by you, Hassan. Yeah. yeah, dude. I know. New York Times reached out to my I, manager to be like, really? "Can you can you pass this Fuck information?" No. Fuck no. And I was like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> no, but like uh, he was super. He was super cool though. And I, yeah, I, I no, thought that, he was like very like you know he was like I, the way he the way he dealt with like everyone sort of like thirsting over him. I thought it was yeah. he was very mature. Yeah, yeah. and the dude's like, "I'm not Houthi. I'm just Yemeni." Like. I I even directly asked him about uh, whether or not like he hates Jewish people. I was like, do you like as as in the kindest way I possibly can, not by being like, um, why do you hate Jewish people? Like, I'm not gonna say that. It's fucking stupid. But I would literally was like, what do you think about people who are like pro uh, Palestine? Uh, a lot of like Jewish people lead the protests here in America, and he was like, yeah, they're sick. It's great. Anyone who's like anti, uh, anyone who's like against uh, Israel's genocide is is for me. 
Um, well, I don't. I don't want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to rile up the chat. So let's go with like a less maybe politically controversial propaganda song. Cue up. Uh, Serbian artillery is guided by God. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, but there is that one guy. The the what is it? The Maidaine or whatever. The the dude uh, who who proposed to his wife. By using an Israeli artillery shell that did not explode near him. Did you see that? <laughs> these dudes are like finding... He's a Lebanese guy, I think. And it's like they're they're finding new and, and fun ways to just like make, uh, you know, make make their lives more interesting with <laughs> using the things that have been is given to is, is this the guy? This is not the guy. I've, seen, I've, seen, I've this seen this guy before. before. Yeah. This guy's got five million subs, bro. He's right. mogging me. My brother no, yeah. Like, all, every, every, like, cleric is huge. Like, uh, you should, the Saudi ones are, like, they're Mr. Beast. Yeah. You know, they have, like, 50 million. Yeah. Oh, and also. I like how they're trendy, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them, a lot of them will have, like, Balenciaga shit. <laughs> what, what is this? So Are you gay? Shoot. Patrick bet David asked Graham Stephan point blank. Which the debate the two things to put in score, for? and you have to have one of them. Which one will it be? You ready for this tech? Yeah, I love Patrick Ben David. Wait, 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 you gotta, yeah, you gotta say, who is Patrick Ben David? I'm oh, not familiar with this. Uh, yeah, dude, he's the yeah. best. He's the best. Okay, okay. I know, I know. Tim Heidecker is basically is like is like is 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 making fun of him on the new season of On Cinema, yeah. but I don't know like the source material. Okay, he's sort of like a business success win kind of guy. No, no, no. He's like a multi-level marketing guy. Oh, even yeah. better. Oh, yeah. yeah. As I, as and, I repeat and, myself. and basically, he's a he's a multi-level marketing guy. And he he basically fucking has his podcast where uh, it's called Valuetainment. He's uh, I think it's like Iranian. Oh, he's Iranian. Yeah, he's yeah. Iranian. Can you? But I was shocked when I found out this guy wasn't Israeli. Like yeah, no. his name is Patrick, Patrick Ben David. David. Yeah. Bet yeah. David. He's hiding. Yeah. Bet da he, his name's Patrick Bet, Bet David, and he runs Valuetainment. I was like, this is the most Israeli guy that ever lived. No, no, he's Iranian, and I don't, I don't think he's he's like Iranian Jewish either. I think no. he's like he's like straight up. I think in he's a, Iranian Christian, like maybe Armenian descent as well. In a, in Jacob Bacharach's uh, debut novel, there's a character who's a lawyer named David Ben David. It's one, of the funniest, <laughs> it's one of the funniest characters in the whole book. Yeah, only no. shows up in the last chapter, but he's really good. No, he's not Cuban. No, no, no. <laughs> no. But, Come but, on. but, but, I always say Iranians are the Cubans of the, of the Mena region. So they Honestly, are very. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's also awesome because I mean, he's. their expat community is great. In this, in this, uh, in this community, we call him Evil Jank. Because he has like, he kind of <laughs> looks like Jank a little bit. But oh, like, yeah. but like skinnier. Is to be gay, lesbian, bisexual. Queer, trans, and they have to know at an early age because it's part of us being free and not being discriminatory. What you those two would you want your kids to learn about? And you have to give I up the other. The other I feel like there has to be a balance because you don't want to be oppressive Who the fuck or let's are say. These guys? <laughs> so this is Graham. What State. the fuck? This is Graham Stephen. He's he's also like a like a motivational get your money up, not your funny up kind of guy. How I actually did he make his, his money just like uh, no, being, he's, the, he's a being landlord, the be, being the clone of Tobey Maguire that they use for organs? No, no, no he's a he's a landlord. <laughs> uh, I've uh, I think he owns like a lot of uh, properties or something. <laughs> so I have a lot of reasons to like this. Yeah, guy. This, yeah. That's bootleg Tobey Maguire and bootleg Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, they were yeah. I actually I actually went on an interview with them. It was they were very good. I don't know how else to describe it. Like they didn't they were not like. They were very centrist on it, kind of, if, mm. if that makes sense. Like, they they let me explain my positions on, like, landlords and stuff like that. And, you know, they even uh, put the information afterwards, like, when I was spitting facts so at them so about they're homelessness. They're straight shooters. They're not they are okay, straight shooters, yeah. yeah. All right. I, yeah. I, I, I spoke yeah, too yeah. soon. I like that. I just, I like the green screen that Patrick Bet David always uses for his interviews because it's, like, the conceit here is like we're having a nice, relaxing day at the beach <laughs> where I'm spending two hours berating you, asking you if like I three year olds should ha be on puberty blockers. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm at, we're at the beach and we're talking about top surgery all day. I, I think <laughs> I, I, I do think that Patrick met David, like weirdly enough, I don't think he's like that invested in the meta. I think he's more like I think he also is more agreeable as well. He's like a bit, little bit more normal, or maybe he's like too too busy being fucking valuetaining. I guess he is more into the valuetainment aspect yes, of life. Yes. But I have seen some like dumb culture war shit from him. But um, I mean, yeah. But he's not yeah. like a Matt Walsh type who's like 
talking about baby uh, genitals like every day. Yeah. So yeah, yeah his yeah. lips aren't as kissable as Matt Wallace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your he's, he's your not, kid is gay. You don't, you don't want, want them to feel like they can't be accepted and they can't be themselves. But at the same time, there's got to be some sort of. You got to pick one of them. You gotta pick <laughs> oh yes. Oh, I, mean, he's, I love I him it. because he's so intense. Yeah. Like, yeah dude. Like, he can be talking about anything. He can be talking about anything, and he's always has the same intensity. He's like, no, you have to pick one of them. He's like Anton Chigurh. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Was, do I have to call it? Yeah. <laughs> I love this idea. Like, you're having a nice day at the beach. It's the day that you're going to propose, and this guy just wanders. Yeah, he has one of those, like, cow pokers. He's like, yeah, 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 he's got, he's got, he's he's got the cattle gun. He's like, yeah. would you marry oh. this Would you marry this woman, the love of your life, or take $10 million yeah. right now? <laughs> <laughs> sir, or I kill you. Dude, dude, he got this commission, dude. I love, like, I love this. Oh, is that him with Lincoln and Milton Freeman? Wait, Milton Duval? Freeman, Martin Luther King, <laughs> Einstein, and then he shot And then a NASCAR driver? Is that j j it's a fucking... Uh, Bro, why is Dale he... Why is the Shaw? Why is the Shaw in the middle? <laughs> that is really overselling the Shaw. Yeah. That he's like on yeah, a yeah, level with Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln and Albert Einstein. <laughs> yeah, and, and, well, also, also fucking Milton, <laughs> Milton Freeman, Freeman too. <laughs> well, I love Milton Freeman next to Martin Luther King. Yeah. They were friends. Yeah, they were yeah. buddies. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like if Martin Luther King almost, were still alive, I, he would definitely be an Austrian uh, uh, com uh, economics. I yeah. love that. I love that Patrick is like next to Tupac and he's like, okay, I'm, I'll introduce These you to the group. These are my friends. Yeah. 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 Let me, yeah. It's Senna. Who, who's Senna? Is that the Ayrton racer guy? Senna was the, the subject of the best sports documentary ever, Senna. He was an F1 driver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Senna. No, I thought it was Dale Earnhardt. It's, it's sick. <laughs> it's sick because, like, MLK is taking notes from all these wonderful people. <laughs> like, like, like Patrick I, gotta get this, I gotta get this fire in my next yeah. speech. Like, yeah. right, if your son's gay, he's a big one. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the conversation. Dude, yeah, he, he's in purgatory. He, he can meet all these historical figures, and he's like, would you accept $10 million, but your son is gay? Or would you be $100,000 in debt, but your your son has a 12-inch dick? And he's straight. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, that would be so much more entertaining if he was asking questions like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, the only Patrick Bet David video, a guy who only watched this one thinking that he only does the TikTok style questions. <laughs> it's like yeah, LGBT yeah. rights or healthcare. <laughs> gay, gay son or thought daughter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Come on, girl. I don't know, man. I, I don't. So I, that's yeah. a problem. But that's a problem. Yeah. And, and the reason why that's a problem is the following thing it's not a problem. You um, this in your head. Are you gay? Me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do I? Not what do I need to do? What the fuck? They got him. They got him. They got him. That is that is this some guy, value, Dave. Yeah. This guy fucking rules. No, I imagine him always like getting up in the middle of a debate and be like, "Are you not value tamed?" Like, <laughs> I just I feel like that's his thing. I, I and I am fucking value tamed every yes. time I watch him. What, I don't know what it is. Does he make merch? I want to see oh, is, he probably has the imagine, ugliest. Yeah. I, I imagine he has the ugliest, like, crypto-looking lion. You know yeah. what I mean? But there's, there you go, the logo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's probably like yeah. Oh, I, thought the, that, I thought that was an yeah. ape of some kind. Yeah. It's probably like the lion on the front and on the back is like a Patrick Bet David quote. Something. Yeah. Uh, something that's yeah. like you know, compound interest is money gained. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's a promise. The following thing. Um. <laughs> Are you gay? I like that he waits. Like, he's like, this is going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah. Are you I gay? Say, I want to hear the answer. Me? No. no. <laughs> what do, I, not what do I need to do no. to convert? Yeah, I'm like, what do I need to do to convert you to being gay? I don't think you, you can. You don't think I could convert you to being gay? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, who, dude, 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 he's training. No, no, no. His Wait, I brain, need to see where this goes. The bra his brain is like a mystery. The way it works is so fantastic. I'm not even kidding. He thinks... He's convincing me to be gay right He now. thinks he has <laughs> this line of thought right now that he is, he is going to put forward is going to blow your fucking mind. He thinks he's like doing mathematics. Right, I, need, I, need, I need to who hear this. converted fact. you into getting a real estate license? I did. Who influenced you though? How did you learn about real estate? Saw a TV commercial for a million dollar listing. Perfect. I, I so, got it in my mind. And you were influenced to be a realtor. Oh my God. You were born with yes. one oh to be a realtor. Oh my God, yes. Bingo. Yes. Yeah. 
Did you get it? No. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. He's an adult. What are you talking about? He's right and you're afraid. He's right and you're scared. He's right and you're scared. He's so right. Television can influence you to get a real estate license, so it can also influence you to change alter your sexuality yes it, it, it influences oh, you oh, to yeah. suck a dick man. dude He's i remember when i got i remember when i got my bottom certification <laughs> dude dude it's so good it's so good that like yes being a property owner is biological yeah, <laughs> like yeah. just like being gay oh, oh my he's god so awesome he he set up this entire interview just for that yeah that yeah. came to him that came to him when he was like spending eight days in a sauna and he was like i'm gonna sweat lodge well, i'm gonna bust this out on value the first two minutes, so he was ready for it it's yeah he couldn't hold yeah, it in any longer please so sure. stats yeah. came out that shows which generation is the gayest generation of all. <laughs> it's part of the LGBTQ Bro, he's community. got empirical evidence! Yeah. Oh, dude, dude, empirical <laughs> evidence lovers destroyed. What's <laughs> up, dude? Well, I guess, which generation is I am, uh, oh, it's Gen Z. <laughs> I, I, I can literally give you the, the details yeah. off the top of my head. 26% of Gen Z are gay uh, or identify as queer as opposed to like, I think 60 or 10.6% of millennials. So his argument is going to be television making them gay, which mm. is awesome. Do you think you care more about what I think at this age or when you were 14 years old? Definitely 14. No problem. Me too, right? So, no problem. <laughs> do you think yeah, it's easier to convert you in a way of thinking at 14 or 33? 14. Of course, right? right? Okay. okay. I became a Christian because somebody talked to me about it. I got into insurance because somebody influenced me to get into insurance. Okay. <laughs> I got Please into bodybuilding because. Further. Oh my God! Please take it one Here. step further. Okay, dude, it's it's a lock. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, choose your enemies wisely. Business uh, planning for the audacious few. Your next five moves: master the art of business strategy. Oh, oh yeah, these are. I know oh, what I'm getting. Yeah. I, I'm getting my family all of this shit for oh, Christmas. It's like Lakers colors. Uh, what? I, I I I think it's like. Uh, I think I think the, his error here is that he thinks that uh, homo and heterosexuality are just different ways of thinking. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. No. He. The, the boss collection oh, is sick. Oh, the entrepreneur the, set. The oh. set. Yeah. If you get one of these leather keychains, dude, your life will change. You will have an MLM. Imagine, okay? imagine showing up to a date with a Patrick Bet David leather backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I would be shocked if you're not getting blown on the spot. Dude, the boss said, what's happening? Only, like, only $350? That's it? <laughs> they're, well, they're, what? Oh, you, oh, you, you get you, dice? You get, you get Patrick Bet David limited edition steel dice. Oh, my God. And it says outwork on it and energize. Oh. This I, is phenomenal, We're dude. playing D&D &D with Patrick Bet yes. David rules. Yeah. My cleric proposes a, a <laughs> marketing strategy. <laughs> It's funny because the, the the lion, or at least the, These, the male lion. Oh, they have an athletic like, collection. It's oh, sold out. Oh. Damn, dude, this is that like, doesn't surprise me. Blue athletic T-shirt, dude. He only has the shield. What is this stock art shield that he has? That he just like. Are you kidding me? That is the official animal of valuetainment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say male yeah. lions are notoriously the, among the laziest animals on the planet. Yeah, but they, don't work but they look fucking they're collecting, sick. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That, no, they're not lazy. They're collecting passive income. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was influenced by Arnold Schwartz. I went to Santa Monica Community College because I was influenced because that's where Arnold went. Influence. Somebody influenced you, right? Wait, what? Four is, generations. That is one five of the generations. dumbest things I've ever heard. <laughs> I need to go to Arnold's Community College. Dude, it's probably better Arnold than all the other like, ones. Yeah. Famous for famous for you know his, his educational pursuits. <laughs> That's awesome. That's like Arnold just came into community college unformed. He was just yeah. like he was just like a nerd. And, and, he, got, and yeah. he wasn't. He didn't even. They didn't even like lifting weights. Still. Like <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they're like Arnold, you have to become the Terminator. <laughs> Dude, the thing I love about him is that, like, I feel like people don't watch him and, and appreciate him for the reasons that we appreciate him. I, I think there are a lot of people who just, like, think like he does. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw Joe Rogan just slobbering all over him. It was a horrible display. I saw a video. Of course, Patrick Bet David reposted it, but it's a video of Joe Rogan being like, he's so smart and he's made so much money and he's only doing valuetainment so people can learn from him <laughs> he's such a good guy <laughs> yeah the shitty part is it's such a good name 
Valutainment. Yeah, I love Valutainment. I mean, it's like it's straight QVC. I think like it's very, it's so basic. It's as basic as a stock art lion. Uh, I I love it. There's Relations. I am being Valutainment. Traditionalist. Always. You got the boomers, millennials, Gen X, and you got. But oh, the thing I wanted to point to. Fuck, I keep pausing. I'm sorry. But the thing I wanted to point to is like he always has these like very convoluted completely irrelevant sequence of thoughts that he springs together to like seemingly make this compelling argument like he went from yeah. he went from like you know uh, who do you think is the gayest generation <laughs> and it's like yeah and they watch tv right you watch tv you're gay <laughs> like Gen it's Z. awesome you ready traditionalist 0.8 percent of our gay 0.8 percent of traditionalists are gay Boomers, 2.6%. Uh, then you go to 5 the data he's presenting here. Yeah, no, we, 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 we can't because uh, he's yeah. right. He's percent. right. No, he watched you go Band to 10%. Brothers hmm. and he was like 0.8% of these there, guys yeah. are gay. I guarantee you they're not. I mean, like, it's, it's identifying this guy. But, like, uh, if you believe 0.5% of the male population in 1940 never did anything gay, um, Pat, well, I, I got some valutainment I need to sell you. There is no you know stigma. There's no stigma like to you're coming out as Pan in 1941. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he is boomer train wrecks. You're right. Gen Z identifies <laughs> as oh, LGBTQ. Twenty-one yeah, percent. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Twenty-one percent. So, who do you think cares less about what you and I think, traditionalists or Gen Zs? Traditionalists. You think if you and I are 70 years old and we're gay, do you really think you and I care about what other people think? You are what do you think? A no. You're coming out. You ever seen a grandma or grandfather drop f bombs and it's like, get your butt out of my because that you know listen, I'm ten years away from living and dying. Like I don't give a shit what you think what? about. Oh my what god! The fuck are you oh my talking? god! Oh my god! Oh, I just picked it up. He was. It's it's hard to pick up because he's such high. He's he's bringing such high level ideas. <laughs> yeah. Okay? yeah. He's overheating. You, you have to have a really high IQ to understand what Patrick Ben David is saying. <laughs> um, no, he's saying it's impossible to influence old people because they say slurs, as evidenced by the fact that they say slurs because they're gonna die soon. Who cares? But it's very mm -hmm. easy to influence children. So that's the reason why gay people are influenced into being gay when they're children. Can I just point out that he said old people are 10 years away from living and dying? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, which one? What age? <laughs> no, they're it's pros, man. It's like Tacoma wept. He's doing like, he's doing pros. He's like, you don't understand. This is a high level poetry. He's a poetic guy as I a mean, bar. But if 21% of Gen Z is gay, they're being influenced just like you were influenced to be a realtor, just like I was influenced to go into SMC. Influence. That's a problem. So the fact that you, a very smart guy, a super successful guy at your age, cannot tell the two apart, that means you're, you're not really putting a lot of thought into what's going to influence who. Because he is, though. Yeah. He's always yeah. thinking about how influenced the, the youth is about getting gay what what is SMC influence the thing that he said he was influenced into getting into is oh that... smc santa monica college oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah he was influenced right. by arnold to go to smc uh which is you know the harvard of the west <laughs> yeah <laughs> the harvard of community colleges in Faith, the west. that's going to influence you to do what Completely different thing. Don't you think that some of that, though, is a bit of that overall people are... Bro, the most effective counter to this, not to be like an annoying debate guy, is to be like, so when did you get influenced to like pussy, my, my yeah. man? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what, what happened? Like, uh, like, what movie convinced you that pussy is the shit? Because uh, when you say that, yeah, when you say something like that, it's going to be like, what? The what? I've... I, I love... love pussy. Yeah, I love <laughs> pussy. I, I've, I've always loved pussy. Like, who taught you to be fucking into, into women? Are on somewhere on a spectrum and if you're let's say a two out of ten or a three out of ten that maybe you're more open about that whereas in other generations you weren't and perhaps it's somewhere in the middle no i think lgbtq <laughs> is a religion and you choose which religion you want to be in front of your kids okay uh you choose if a person is gay you're eventually going to be gay what? You're, you're going to be gay. You're not going to be, if, if you're going to do what you're going to do. Like, for example, I, I, I thought about, I interviewed a guy who was a um, uh, negotiator, FBI agent, who would sit down with people that killed. He was like, take the cock out of your mouth. Uh, uh, that were, you know, murderers that killed their own family. 
<laughs> what, dude, do you now understand Wait, why? What the fuck is he? <laughs> His mind works in such mysterious ways. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. He said, "You're eventually, if you're gay, you're eventually gonna be gay." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Is okay, that so wrong? If you're, if you're gay, <laughs> so wait, if, you're, if you're gay, if you're gay, and it means you're eventually gonna be gay no matter what, then that does that that runs counter to his influence argument. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> no, it's completely guys, guys, contradictory. Guys, you don't understand. No, no, no. It somehow makes sense. Okay, you just have to have a really high IQ to understand what Patrick Bet David is saying. Just listen to him talk about the yeah. FBI mind hunter guy. The, and he, he went to a hostage situation and said, "Are you going to be gay or go to Santa Monica Community College?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he's Members so and I good. said, so what gets somebody to get to the point of wanting to do something like this? And he explained how there's a difference between what you're born with, what you're influenced with, and then to take the action, right? There are some people that are born who are dark human beings. Okay, okay. <laughs> What, what being, what being, go. what being oh, gay is oh like, uh, uh, being a dark human being who's maybe a serial killer, okay, uh, a real estate agent, <laughs> and, and also being influenced to, to go to Santa Monica Community College. <laughs> the problem is, is he, when he talks, he pauses, so you sit with whatever the last words he says. It's yeah, so, and it's always yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah. Will, Will said he's going to yeah, he's gonna I, dip I out. You, uh, no, you can keep going. My car's like eight minutes away. So. Okay, all right. Um, this is nasty. period I'm that they down. enjoy it. They're born that way. You know, if you look at the Iceman, I don't know if you've ever seen interviews of the Iceman. Have you ever watched interviews of Iceman? Yeah. Old, and he enjoyed what he did. What percentage of the world is like that? What would you say? 0.1 percent. Okay. So, are we gonna say no? You know, he was influenced to be that way. There had to be a darker person in his life to get him to be that dark. No, he's born that way. Okay. Are some people born gay, maybe? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Oh, but if we he's not ruling maybe. that out. He's open minded. He's woke. He's woke. He's woke. He he's saying like, you know, some people just like serial killers are born homosexual. Take I a thousand it. gay people. What percentage of them are gay because they were born gay? What percentage of them are gay because they were influenced to be gay? Or life influenced them to be gay. That's a real question we have to life talk about. I understand it's a very I, uncomfortable. Yeah, thing. I think it would be just attraction. Who are like like I am attracted to certain people and a certain type. I'm not attracted to another type. No problem. So I feel like that would be the same thing with gender. I'm, I'm it's like if you're attracted to men or women, that uh, would be Graham. Yeah. Do you think you need to learn how to give a blowjob to another boy at eleven years old? No. That book is in schools recommended teaching by Whoa, he just logic jam. He fucking cooked him, dude. That was a setup. He he he! T it took him it took him six minutes to like arrive at uh, at at this jam. He's like, yeah, well, that's that's what they're teaching our children is how to give uh, the best blowjobs at the age of eleven. Well, I mean, like, wait, hold on a second. Like, I I I wouldn't necessarily need that because you know I hadn't been influenced to be gay at eleven. But if there was a book that taught me how to like uh, please a woman at age eleven, I mean, that would be fine with me. <laughs> Well, he, that's, I think that's his argument, okay, too. All right, all right. That's, what it, that's what he's... Uh... Teachers in America. Do you think that's a problem? Sure. Do you think it's a better usage of my time to learn how money works? Yes. Or how to please another boy at 11 years old? Right. So then you... Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. He's, saying, wait a second. he's saying make the kids watch Patrick Bet David. So they get value tained at the age of 11 and they know how, to, how money works. I would that's go, what he's saying. I would go one step further than that. I would say if you are pregnant right now... If you just found out, if you like, if it barely has eyes, you should be putting headphones, uh, the the AirPod Maxes around your stomach, and blasting Patrick Bet David into your fetus. <laughs> so Mozart. Or yeah, yeah, it's better than Mozart. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I they dude, they'll learn. They'll learn how to build their own multi-level marketing scheme. I I really. I really respect that. By the way, it's top of the hour. I'm gonna run a three minute ad break right now. But also, which is you know, uh, if you if you want to you want to get your money up, not your funny up, you know, subscribe for five dollars or free to avoid the top right. of the hour ad break. I will but, take this opportunity to do a bit of do to the chat. I had a great time hanging out with you guys today, and thanks for having yeah. me on. Thank you so much, uh, Will Medigrove Chapo Trap House, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, where can people find you guys? Or you uh, Patreon, in particular? Chapo Trap House at Patreon. Hell yeah! Yeah. Also, our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Chapo Trap House. Yeah. Wait, isn't it Chapo FYM too? Yes. Not Chapo Trap House. Wait, wait, hold on. Did we? 
<laughs> is that <laughs> Angel? <laughs> you only have one Twitch. Wait, where's yeah. Michael? Twitch Michael, Michael will. Yeah. yeah, Michael's, in Did the chat. Michael's in the yeah, chat. Did I screw Michael's in the chat. Michael He'll... will correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. He said the Twitch is Chapo Trap House. Okay, it's no yeah, longer no, Chapo FYM. Is is Chapo Trap House now? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, no, you were right. You were right. I I thought it was still Chapo FYM, <laughs> but the name change has uh, taken place. You get one of those every uh, sixty days, I think, on Twitch. If you wanna, if you wanna change it. Ooh. Um. No, I uh, I also will be playing Skull and Bones in a little bit as well. Uh, for our hashtag ad. Um. So just uh, for you guys, you guys obviously don't have to be here for that. I'm gonna be playing with Will Neff in a little bit. Is that the new pirate game? Yeah. Looks cool. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I've been I've I've watched so much One Piece that uh, I'm I'm on my pirate shit. I'm on my pirate art. Stop! You're gonna get your chat mad again. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's not my chat. My chat never gets mad. It's the it's, it's the, the fucking. It's, it's the bad signal. They can, yeah. they can feel a disturbance. It's it's the, the it's the dudes on Twitter who don't watch, but then like get mad anyway, and and are just like weirdo racist motherfuckers. The, my favorite thing with that, like, not to go deep into it, but just like I saw one post where the guy was like, he was like, oh yeah, this guy's just a normal Yemeni, huh? And post a picture of him with like a gun. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's the weirdest thing you can do in Yemen is have a gun. Yeah, I can't this guy's believe... a real weirdo. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude who's 19 years old, like, fucking experienced the genocide. Uh, in in a country that has the most arms after the yeah. United States of America, by the they, way, they have a huge fucking firearm culture. It's yeah. a gigantic thing over yeah, there. Yeah, even all the way back to the fucking swords that they rock too at their belts. That shit's cool. How yeah, Yemenis have like that. family daggers. Yeah, I love that. It's dope. Yeah. Also, obviously, famously American kids. Yeah, they never have guns. Americans don't have guns at all. But anyway, Patrick Bit David, let's finish this off. He's 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 bringing us in. He's saying like children need to watch the Valuetainment podcast instead of, instead of dick su sucking each other off. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> have to decide your values and principles between the two. I think these values being taught to kids are kids typically more liberal or conservative? Liberal. Liberal. I'm, I'm, are you kidding me? I'm all liberal. Like, let's try drugs. Let's try this. Let's break the law. Let's break this. Hey, let's sneak into the swimming pool. Yeah. Have Famously, <laughs> that's my favorite cops chase liberal us. policy. <laughs> hey, let's test this out. We're liberal, right? So we don't need to teach more liberal policies to kids. They're going to do shit. We're going to do stuff. We need to balance it out with what? With this, okay? Valuetainment. Yeah. yeah. Liberalism is when you break in the pool break and the have, the yeah. have the cops chase you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will never forget when Barack Obama made that speech yeah. in, in 2008 about breaking into the swimming pool. That's what got him. That That's how he secured the, the Cuban vote in Miami. It's just like, they, that's what a normal thing is. That's how, uh, how everyone operates in America. So now yeah. watch this. Do you think rich, greedy people who have a lot of money, do you think they need to be taught more conservative stuff or more this stuff? Liberal stuff. What do you think? Do you see how yeah, this is working yeah. out? So to me, no. it's the other no. way around. I think we. There ain't no fucking way, dog. Once again, like you're talking about, you're talking about people's like innate values, which like after a certain point are like aren't that malleable. So like this idea that anyone can just be influenced, like the rich, greedy people, if they were only influenced by like uh, I don't know, uh, valuetainment that taught them to be less greedy. <laughs> or same with gay. You could just be taught or influenced to be less gay. These are the, like the, the currency that he's dealing with here. It's just like I, I don't, I, yeah. He does have a beautiful mind. Also, I yeah. feel bad for the guests. Anything they say is yeah, yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason. There's no reason. Why even have a guest? Yeah, yeah. there's no reason for them to be there. All he does. No, is they're like, there because he's graciously teaching them about how he made his money. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that is like just like us. These he, these could just be iPads that just say <laughs> yes every five minutes. Like it's so unfair to yeah, them. The value, movement, entertainment. <laughs> oh my god. So movement is supposed to be in there too. It's not just value and entertainment. It's value, entertainment, and movement. Dude, I didn't even think. God. Dude, this got layers, dog. You dude, did not even think about that. Is, I didn't. This should be Val move table. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, just, I love dude. how like everything he did, like all his analogies are like they're like following like a poorly transcribed recipe. Where it's like, okay, preheat the oven to 375 degrees, but then 20 steps into the recipe, it's like, and then what would you say to an old guy who's gay? What, what, what would you say to a baby who's liberal? 
Yeah. <laughs> Dude. It's like, how, wait, Dude. how did this get in here? And I and I talked to an FBI uh, psych analysis guy. Mindhunter. Yeah, and, and Mindhunter told me, uh, you know, being gay just like being a serial killer is very <laughs> similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he said, like, like basically the same percentage of people that are born innately evil is like, the same percentage of people who are no. born innately gay. Dude, he's so good at yapping. Like, he just... <laughs> he, he is. Like, I, I love listening to him because, like, I I love the way his mind works. He right. always... See, like, right, I, gotta, I think I gotta take off. All right. All right. Hey. Peace, Cheers, World. Guys. Thank you so much for coming hey, on. Thanks so much for the shawarma. Really, really nice support. to meet you. Really you're, nice to see you, see you soon. Yeah. You're unfortunately not gonna get your money up because you're gonna miss the value yeah. entertainment yeah. movement yeah. part. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. I'm gonna be a billionaire next check, time you see me. Check our net worth after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, he, but like I was saying, he's like he he develops this yarn. I don't know how else to describe it. Where like, it's so convoluted. It has nothing to do with the previous thing that he just yeah. mentioned. Yeah. But he, in his mind, like, he legitimately thinks he just cooked it up. Like, he just fired something that blew you, that yeah. blew your mind up. Like the value movement entertainment shit. Yeah. No, he's always, like, the second that you think you have a grasp on whatever he's talking about, he introduces a totally new thing that does not help the analogy at all. And yeah. only serves to make it more complicated. Well, that's why he pauses so you can, you can sit with it for a second. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel so bad for these guys. I know. Yeah. Mixed it, it up. up. So, so be understood. This guy's 28 years old. He's gay. That guy no problem. I got plenty of gay in You're right. You're right. Oh my god. No. Well, barely. He's barely <laughs> said a word, too. He has not one but two guys. No talking. <laughs> They're there to what? listen, man. They're what? there to. There, I, you, Patrick Bet David has been so insane that I haven't noticed that the guests are wearing the same thing. Yeah. Well, they're like, they're very, uh, they live ascetic lifestyles despite the fact that, like, he's a landlord. I don't know if he is. I, I, I met both of them. I have plenty of lesbian leaders in my company, plenty of them, and see how my relationship is with them. You chose to do that as an adult. Salute. Couple of them were here yesterday. Just watch how they. So has what he never the asked them if they were gay when they were younger? <laughs> like, like this. Ooh. This is like a one-second conversation with a person that you respect. Okay. If you have gay employees, it's. I mean, it's a weird question to ask, obviously. But like, I love the notion that he has never been like. So what's up? When did you become gay? <laughs> but he he doesn't even entertain that that they could be gay when they were younger he's saying he's basically saying i think like by virtue of them being so successful and smart mm -hmm. that they can work for patrick bet david valuetainment movement that that proves they only became gay as adults yeah if they had become gay as children yeah you know then they could never work for valuetainment yeah but but it is being a choice uh, yeah, yeah, being gay is a choice. Sorry, and 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 so is working for Patrick Bet David. And, and I would say that's biological. Yeah. <laughs> some are good choices, some are bad choices. You know what I mean? If my son works for me. Patrick Bet David, I'm going to sell him. We love each other. We have an incredible relationship. Then later on, we need to learn and say, Hey, man, can you be a little bit kind to these people, dude? Relax. They just see things in a different way than you do. All good. I think we need to give what? conservative values to kids when we're liberals. And I think we need to inject a little bit of this when we're older, successful, to be a little bit more understanding. I think the edge. He's, he's saying like, teach the older people liberal values, except that completely contradicts his original point, which is the older you get, the more the less malleable you are. Uh, yeah. and that's, <laughs> so, so what the fuck are you saying? It literally is just the exact antithesis of what he previously brought up. What the fuck? But it wouldn't be like regular liberals trying to convince them. It would be valuetainment. That's right. The new liberal valuetainment for old people. He's saying make the olds gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would, they should do like a Gran Torino too, where Patrick Bet David teaches Clint Eastwood how to be gay. Yeah. You have to do this because yeah. when you're young, how much do you think of suggestion? Yeah. But now that you're old, you know, you now think I'm never going to have this sex with men. <laughs> Here, watch this video. Of Arnold, he went to Santa Monica <laughs> Community College. <laughs> Doesn't he look good? <laughs> Clint, half the movie is Clint Eastwood trying to figure out 
what ethnicity he is. <laughs> yeah, so he can say the right <laughs> slur. <laughs> I am just, some type of he, He's Hebrew. just firing off all of the slurs. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. Education is out of whack. You know, maybe the LGBTQ stuff can be taught to people that are older to be a little bit more gentle to them. But it's, so you're asking a question, I'm gonna go back to it. God is one of them. What's being taught in school is one of them. Not enough money finances is one of them. The way we turn our heroes into, he, you know, who the hero making machine is in America is a problem. Today we recognize complainers. Today we recognize who posts more naked pictures on social media gets the most likes. Today we recognize that more than somebody like who's responsible makes his own money, works his tape. He's so perfect because like, these are all dumb guy opinions that he's just firing off. Like the, the dumb guy cliches is like- yeah, he, yeah, he's like one step away from being like, they, why don't they teach how to do your taxes in high school? Oh yes, <laughs> exactly, he did do that. He basically did, he's yeah. like, like teach him finances, <laughs> teach him the value of a dollar. He's doing Latina hey, tweets. When I love, I love big. <laughs> You're, you seem very kind, you seem humble, you seem likable, yet you're doing your research, yet you're willing to talk to people. So we've confused kids on who the hero today is. Oh my God, poor person, look at this person. They came out of the closet at 14 years old. Let's do 28 articles on them. But that 14 year old- well, like, what, are, what is he reading? <laughs> what, yeah, what newspaper is that? 14 year old comes out. <laughs> Dude. Dude, what is it? No, literally, what newspaper is he reading? I need to know. That's the funniest newspaper of all time. <laughs> just only covers gay yeah. middle schoolers. It's like, I read this thing, pink news. <laughs> I can't believe Jeremy is gay. A kid who made $28,000 independently, yeah, it's whatever, it's not a big deal. But let's highlight this person. Oh, and they're not, the news is not covering a 14 year old that made $28,000. <laughs> <laughs> what would that article even like? What is going on? I said 28 articles about being gay and then 28. <laughs> <laughs> this is value came to numerology. <laughs> his brain, his brain is so beautiful. He is, he is a beautiful mind, dude. dude. He is. This is incredible. If I if I picked up a newspaper and it was like fourteen year old makes twenty eight thousand dollars, I would be like, oh, I'm having a stroke. Yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> Why is that news? <laughs> yeah. I'm no, dying he's now. Like, it's it's like, the same newspaper. It's yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, they never talk about how <laughs> when a dog bites a man, but man bites dog. <laughs> it's always in the news. Valuetainment. Why is he's, Heathcliff never met Garfield? <laughs> They're both cats. Uh, what are you doing? Which one do we need more for society? Also, wait, hold on. I gotta go back. He's, in his world, children are reading newspapers to see who the heroes are. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kid, it's the kid that came out at 14. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they're picking up like a newspaper called like the Kid Times. And they're like, oh, no articles about anyone who made $28,000 in here. I guess no one's done it. <laughs> yeah, they go immediately to the <laughs> they go immediately go to the who is gay section. <laughs> I love reading my favorite newspaper and twenty eight articles about a kid coming out at fourteen. Imagine like the hard boiled like veteran reporter who works for that newspaper. <laughs> I've been reporting since Watergate. I'm gonna break the story about about uh, Jane and being gay. Cyrus covers. 14 year old coming out oh oh it's so good he dude he lives in such a different world than like the average person more people coming out of closet or more 14 year olds that are making twenty eight thousand dollars on their own we're turning the wrong people into heroes and it's confusing the f out of kids so to me those are things that we've been doing that's kind of messed up America a bit. So if you like this clip... <laughs> oh, wow, jump scare. Dude, Whoa. Whoa. dude, I didn't like this clip. I loved it. <laughs> I love this love, clip like so much. Like yeah, that is a <laughs> fucking... That is such a horrifying smash cut because, like, that is a very combed and... So at 13 years thing. old, I had a... I want to know what else he's... I need to see, like, what his most popular video is.
Mafia underboss Sammy Gravano breaks silence after 20 years. Highest paid Mafia boss. So I guess like six years ago, this is the kind of stuff he used to do. Like the Mafia boss conversations and shit. Yeah. Right? And then he's like completely transitioned into the... Did he interview with Kobe Bryant? <laughs> no, I don't... Did he interview Kobe Bryant? He did. Oh my God. That's crazy. What if Kobe died like the next day? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, There's Kim no Jong-un in China, North Korea defector. She's my favorite. Um, but I want to see like something. Oh, Dinesh D'Souza. He's had Jordan Peterson on. Yeah, a lot, it seems. <laughs> He's had he Alex had... Jones on. Ooh. Jimmy Hoffman. Show them Jr. the clip of PBD asking DeSantis if he's wearing boots uh, with hidden heels. Uh, are you the type of person, like, I have people around me that love to say, hey, bro, this is like, dude, what a perfect demonstration as to why Ron DeSantis' campaign fucking failed. He went on the Patrick Bet David podcast. <laughs> yeah, whoever, whatever staffer suggested that, like, forbid them from working in politics ever again like, who is he gonna like, win he, over here like what is happening i also oh. feel bad for the guests because they're like the producer probably reached out yo we're gonna have a great conversation he's gonna you guys are gonna talk about great things yeah but the guy doesn't even say one word yeah, yeah. the clip the clip is just called i'm 511 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's all. It's, yeah, it's, no, he got so cooked. But because Ron DeSantis has no juice whatsoever, only 142,000 views. Like, Pat, you got something that in your teeth. Grim. These are the oh, annoying shit. people in your life, right? Hey, Pat, pull your zipper up. You know, hey, Pat, do this. Hey, pull one of your socks is lower than. Dude, I can listen to this guy do fucking analogies for the rest of my life. He, yeah. he is so goaded with that. He's just like, how how is he gonna tie this to? I'm always watching to see like how he's gonna tie this random thing. Back to like Ron DeSantis being 5'11". The other one. I'm sure your marketing team points out how they're trying to troll you in the marketplace. Okay, I'm sure they're doing that. Can you bring this one clip? I know you were on, uh, 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 what do you call it? On, uh, uh, what was it? Bill Maher, and Bill Maher talked about the boots. I've seen you walk with these boots. Go ahead and play this clip. This on TikTok went viral. It doesn't have a million views. It doesn't have, you know, 10 million views. This thing's got 1.2 million likes. And, and some people are wondering, how, what are they? I don't even. Under, so I haven't what, seen that. What there's? They've not shown this to you. Okay. <laughs> Great lie, Ron. Oh, really God. fooled me. Yeah, and he's doing the thing. Oh my God, he's such a fucking idiot. He's doing the thing where he's like, oh, I can't see with my eyes. Oh, like, like you know what I mean? When you're yeah. like, with like a stupid person, or when you're like a kid, you're like, oh, what is that over there? I can't see it. Yeah. yeah. You're getting yeah. cooked, Ron. That's what you, you need to open up your goddamn eyes. Okay. Like, what yeah, they're he trying it like hidden heels or some sort of like crazy issue that has never existed before. Yeah, yeah, I've never. I didn't even know. What do you, well, what do you he call it? Up. He said no. This thing has 1.2 million likes, so he for sure saw it. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah of course he saw it. He's probably fucking white knuckling through every interview. I hope they don't ask me about my heels. <laughs> like to say with this is that in your boots you have heels. No, no, no. That's yeah, what they're no, trying to those say. are just standard off the rack um, Lucchese. Um, how, how, Lucchese tall you, how tall are you, Governor? How tall? Five eleven. Five eleven. Okay. Why don't you wear tennis shoes and dress shoes? Uh, I do wear tennis shoes when I work out. Yeah. 100%. You do. Yep. Okay. I got a gift for you. I'd love. Dude, he's cool to wear. Okay, I Ron shot got at Ferragamo. Okay. Oh shit. And I don't accept I gifts. I can't accept it. I, I totally get it. I'm sorry. So if you like this clip and you want to watch <laughs> that's it, what a clip. weird clip. What, that Dude, is one it's of the most so awesome. That is one of the most uncomfortable clips I've ever seen. And then and then like obviously like uh, the brain dead Patrick Bet David fans don't know that like you can't accept gifts as a politician. For obvious reasons, but like they're like, I don't accept gifts is wild. It's like, yeah, dude, it's the law. Like mm. he has to disclose it depending on what it is and how much it is. They, that was the clip. They just did you like that clip? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. What is to like of like this is the weirdest clip I've ever I was seen. Invited. Okay, let's all right. Uh, Yami Park, all right. my queen. All right, Yami Park. She's you know, she got the she got the heavies in the words of Andrew Schultz. Like you get FBI this is, Dallas last year. <laughs> And then, like two, be two days right before my event, the head of diversity calls me, 
<laughs> and then she calls me. Uh, my political opinions are too controversial. So she has canceled me to get, come. Get out of here. Bingo. At FBI. <laughs> so wait, what? But they yeah. agreed that I'm going to yeah. speak about my experience from North Korea. Nothing about American politics. The it's FBI my tried to... She's saying the head of the DEI at the FBI tried to cancel her. Yeah. This absolutely happened. Yeah. yeah. She will, well, uh, excuse me. Um, she is a very, uh, she clearly has a long standing track record of being honest and truthful. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to listen to her on this one, Felix. I love, I, Patrick met David. This is like the most deference he's ever shown a guest. He's not like interrupting her and being like, what if you had an opportunity? In his you, you, were le you were lesbian, but you could only live to 50. But, but, but uh, what if you were born with a rental property that you already own? It's because in his mind, he's like, this woman has gone through the worst things. Well, like, the, the, the mentally yeah. disabled uh, Chinese, yeah. the mentally disabled Chinese <laughs> raped her mother and her. Like, remember how the fucking yeah. story yeah. that she's told about that is like, she's been sold into the Chinese family. Everyone was mentally disabled. Yeah. So she, yeah. yeah. She's, she. He believes it. He is 100% the dude that believes this shit, yes. by the way. Yes. Like. Well, oh yeah, you ate rats? Tell me more about the eating rats. <laughs> 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 yeah. Freedom. And, and they still didn't let you? No. In Dallas. Wow. Yeah, FBI it, Dallas. Which is in wow. Texas, which is yeah. still a red state. I know. Yeah. 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 So that's very weird. What, what was the justification? I guess I was not diverse enough. I mean, the head of the diversity. <laughs> ruining Valley he Day, was man. not. Wait, wait. The FBI DEI, head of the FBI DEI division said at FBI Dallas that she wasn't diverse enough. Yeah, I'm sure this happened. Yeah. I am sure I, this I yeah. love this, dude. I was yeah. invited to speak at FBI sure. Dallas last year. Oh, fuck. The shorts are and so annoying. Two, I hate this shit. Right before my event, the head of diversity oh, calls me. And, move some of the stuff. and then she calls me. Uh, my political opinions are too controversial. So she has canceled me. Get, get out of here. Bingo. At get FBI. Out. <laughs> I told you. But we Patrick agreed that I'm going to only smash. speak about my experience from North Korea, nothing yeah. about American politics, just my journey to freedom. And, and they I still didn't let you? No. In Dallas. Wow. Yeah, FBI they, Dallas. Which is in Texas, like, which is yeah. still a red state. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very weird. What, what was the justification? If, I've never seen I this fucking I was guy not diverse ever. enough. I mean, the head of <laughs> diversity. <laughs> <of course. laughs> I mean, I'm an Asian defector. <laughs> North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not diverse enough. Yeah. I was invited to speak at FBI Dallas last year. And then like two, be two days right before my event, the head of that. All right. I hate shorts. These are so fucking annoying. He's crushing it right now. He really is. Like, the, the, uh, there's like a weird roller coaster in views. Ooh, you you're the, the <laughs> son of a king. You're the grandson of one of the most respected and feared leaders in Iran, Reza Khan, the majesty who he was a whole different type of leader. When you drop his name, it's a different kind of respect you get from people that are older. You ask somebody younger right now, they don't really know what it is. They know about your father, but your grandfather was a, you know, a superior general. He was a doer. He got things done and loved and hated at the same time. But I want to talk about your father and the events that led to the fall of Iran. I have my opinions of mistakes that were potentially made. I want to know what you I think need, it was. And I'll, I I'll make a list. I want to play a couple this. clips to you. A couple of the clips are in a book that I'm uh, uh, writing that I've been working on for 13 years. It's, it's not coming out. It's, it's something that I've worked on oh, for many shit. years. 13 years. Um, and yeah, he's, he's in it. He's, 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 when I think he's, about he's the fall of Iran, the, uh, you know, you'll typically hear about the fact that CIA fell. was involved, MI6 was involved. That's why they fell. Okay. Jimmy Carter came in. He did the toast. If you can pull up the picture when you're looking at the toast between the two, you know, you see this here. When I look at this, your dad looks very uncomfortable. And uh, it's almost as if your dad is trying to be respectful, but doesn't trust an ounce. They control many body. things. Did the Jewish lobby or the CIA <laughs> cause the fall of Iran? What the fuck? I, I mean, that's insane. But like, I just love the body, body language expertise that Patrick Bet David is doing. 
on this yeah. photo. <laughs> Which, it's just like a normal toast, and he's like, I can tell that your father is apprehensive and nervous. <laughs> oh, shit, guys, the echo's annoying. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I guess, like, I should tell my guests to leave then. Fuck, dude. There's no other way to get their voices heard, though, so I'm gonna fucking ban you for a day. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, fuck. I know there's a goddamn <laughs> echo, okay? You think, I'm, you think I'm not aware of it? This guy's gone, dude. Yeah, <laughs> fucking gone for the day, bitch. <laughs> Also, the thing I was going to say about uh, the the immortal science of body language is that uh, Patrick De Ped David is the perfect type of person to be like, yes, this is the this is really important science. Yeah, like, I, I read. Saw, you saw how he was like hand on the table like this. Yeah, doing the other kids. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. I read, I read so many. <laughs> I read so many criminal justice books, criminology <laughs> books. I learned about all of this. Of words coming words out, of out of Carter's mouth. mouth. And, but he's trying to be accommodating and respectful. And then Carter, at the same time, he's given a look of, you have no idea what I'm about to do to you when I leave this place. This is December 31st of 19, no, uh, what is it, uh, 1977? Correct. And he leaves, and then next thing you know, uh, you know, the, the conditions get worse and the rest is history. So CIA, MI6, the Shah. There's another documentary I watch about the 1954 oil consortium agreement that they had. It was a 25-year agreement that was coming to an end, and it was a way where originally it was an agreement they made in 1954, 50% of ownership to foreign companies. 40% uh, of it was divided equally, 8% each. Among the five major American companies were British Petroleum, BP, just, they had 40% of it, Royal Dutch, so he could read Shell, Wikipedia they each had 14% of it, CFP, a French company, to receive 6% of it, and this was a very profitable could you, like, venture. you just paraphrase he, this, Patrick? <laughs> You're reading the entire he article. He doesn't say <laughs> you know, How is he supposed to answer this? <laughs> it's a long-ass question. <laughs> it's literally the entire fucking article. At the end, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this would be so much better if he asked the Shah what, if he was gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. when did you learn that your dad was gay? <laughs> Do you think that the Shah or Mossadegh was more easily influenced? <laughs> yeah. Because if Iran's grown the way they are during that 25 year from 19... Okay, I'm going to skip to some good the parts. Of Israel? I think so. Sometimes they are deserving the interests of Israel Explain. because they are... They're pushing around too many people. How do you mean pushing around? Well, pressuring. They have many means at their disposal. They are putting up pressure on many, many people. In the media, they have people. Not the entire media. Some newspapers will only reflect their, their views, yes. No? This next part's important. The New York Times, for instance, is owned by the Salzberger family, who are Jewish. Are you suggesting that the New York Times is biased in its treatment of the question of Zionism, Israel's existence, the United States' relationship with the Arab world? I will have to put all the articles of the New York Times written on this subject and draw the conclusion. You can put this to the computer and it will answer you. What you're That's saying kind of a Patrick Bet yes, David answer. Well, no, the Shah, uh, the Shah is a little Patrick Bet David. No, because he would have said, "Why did they? Why are there no articles about a fourteen-year-old?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, he doesn't have Patrick's <laughs> genius, but it like the the response of like put them all on a computer. Dude, and dude, no, computer. no Ayatollah. If if Patrick Bet David was the Shah. Oh yeah, I'm no. just saying, 100. percent Shaw Patrick just owns the Ayatollah. Yeah, if if uh, it, yeah, if he he would be telling tall tales all day every day, the, the entire Iranian population would love him. Let's <laughs> wait for the answer of the computer. Washington Post. What? <laughs> the same. The networks. Less. I must say, you are speaking with your characteristic candor. Pause right there. So so when when you're hearing that to today. CIA MI6, Jimmy Carter, 1954 Oil Consortium, him calling out mainstream media. Um, and then I'll give you this last 20 second clip if you want to play this round. Oh my God, bro. On uh, uh, not this one, the one He's where. He's the king I of the 12 minute question. CIA MI6, Ron. It certainly is part of the reasons. <laughs> 
And I think uh, for most people who uh, heard the rhetoric and the narrative of his arch enemies, that he was a puppet of the West or anything along those lines, this proves how much he cared and valued the interests of our country to the point of risking his own throne, knowing that some will not take it the right way and may plot against him. Very risky. Well, but that proves his sense of uh, national Absolutely. duty. And Absolutely. I think then he's... <laughs> he's like, yeah, bro, he was being... He was being anti-Semitic on the timeline for us, <laughs> for us, for Iran. <laughs> it's also it's also so weird because it's like no one, no one in the expat community, none of the people who like fly the lion flag. Yeah, what they're like all Which is pro a very Israel. cool flag, to be fair. It is a cool flag. It is flag. a cool flag. It's a cool flag, but at the same like those people are like the most Zionist people, oh, yeah. like outside, yeah. of, outside of like. Foundation for Defense of Democracies or actual Israelis. One hundred percent. I also like he covers the Fiji water with his lion stickers. Oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's no, probably yeah. that's probably some stupid thing. Like, why would I advertise yeah, for yeah, free? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm not giving money. Fiji's not paying me. Pay me. Yeah. <laughs> what the? F oh, dude. Jewish businessman yes. told me. I said, How is it possible? You got this much money, and you're in your mid thirty, six million cash. He says, Patrick. There's one thing you need to know about Jews. I said, what's that? When one makes money, five make money. I said, what? He says, when one of us <laughs> makes money in a business, five other Jews make money. Because we like to make money in groups. I said, so what's the best? <laughs> bro, this is, bro this is, he's, just, he's just repeating protocols on the side. He's like the Japanese during World War II. He read, yeah. he read like protocols and was like, these people are these, amazing. They're magic. They, they, the Jews, they have magic money power. <laughs> I'm going to call five entrepreneurs I know and do a blood ritual. That's so sick. <laughs> he's awesome. He's like, yeah, the Jews, they don't make money one person. They make five people make money. <laughs> do you know the Jews are so keep... smart that they call each other? before 9-11 <laughs> he's he has such a great mind oh, he's so good yeah pa patrick bet david talking about the insurance plot or it's whatever <laughs> he says too many people ethnicities nationalities cultures backgrounds they just want to be the one making money they don't want anybody else around them making money and then eventually they wonder I can wait what, what? Oh! Yeah, he's going there. He's like, yeah, they hate, they hate when Christians make money, <laughs> especially. And you know what they love actually? Uh, stealing Christian children. <laughs> what the he's fuck? So, he's so awesome. He still has the same demeanor when 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 explaining this stuff, which is so sick. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh in his mind he thinks he's spitting. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? He's like, I'm that, saying yeah. the sickest yeah. stuff about Jews. <laughs> like <laughs> oh. Come, nobody wants to go into business with me. Because when you make money, nobody else makes money. So ask yourself the question. Number one, the person you're working for, does he make money and do you make money? And number two, the people that work with you who report to you, if they give their best, do they also make good money the way you're making money? Jewish God, he's so sick. I'm so I'm so happy that there's that music. Yeah, um, the yeah, song? yeah, yeah. The, the music back I'm there, it really hits. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? This is overwhelming. My favorite Patrick Pet David. Dude, I love the PBD heads in the yeah. chat. They're giving I'm us like the best in. PBDs here. Okay. Yeah. God bless chat. This is yeah. I had no idea there was so much. Wait, great okay, material. okay. He lost trust in society. Let's start with that one first. My my lack of trust came from people not wanting to debate anymore. My entire <laughs> my grew up. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. It's like it Socrates. I, you know, he's gonna bring up ancient yeah. Greece or something. Where my mothers were communists. My entire mother's family were communists, hundred percent. Our Bible growing up was a communist manifesto. My dad was an imperialist. <laughs> my dad was one an imperialist. Shah, one loved Stalin and Lenin. So it was a house filled with debate, and I'm in the middle. So forget Hillary against Trump. Like this was the best debate I would be every night. My mom and dad debating. So I enjoy a good debate. We get closer to the truth. So the last couple of years, what was always America's DNA, we kind of got away from the debate concept. It made me very uncomfortable. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I, I like the Patrick Bet David lore that he was reading like uh, Marx and, and Engels growing up. 
We could have gotten like a communist or a Maoist. Yeah, uh, yeah. Instead of Shah, he's like talking about Mossadegh. Yeah, <laughs> he's like a big time Mossadegh head. Um, why aren't celebrities? But this is where he peaks, I think. Why aren't celebrities ever possessed? Anybody that's been famous, slightly famous, that was ever possessed that needed an exorcist, exorcism. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Why? <laughs> oh no! When it panned <laughs> over, oh, he's got. Bro, is, he, is this an actual exorcist? The fuck's going on? Oh, is the priest supposed to tell him like, who he is? Let me explain what I mean by that. Like a, a basketball player, mm. baseball player, an actor, a politician, a military leader, anybody that was somebody of influence, why haven't they ever? Why, if the devil is doing what he's doing, why isn't he going and possessing those guys from preventing them from maybe oh he doesn't believe him yeah. i think he's oh. like yeah this is contentious you, yeah. you can't uh, you can't immediately tell because he's such a brilliant podcaster but he's uh he's a bit contentious here it seems <laughs> there's a you know regrets maybe coming. there's yeah. somebody that is that. he's like i can't believe i'm getting owned by patrick <laughs> Van David. people that we don't know regular folk can I follow up on that real quick? I actually want to hear that answer, yeah. and, and then you can follow up. Well, what you hear from these famous people yeah. is they've sold their soul to the devil. Yeah. That's how they got famous. And so to your point, yeah, I'd like to hear his response. What? Yeah, you got great addition, asshole. Laser, yeah, this guy's have to come he not First of all, they would yeah. have to want to share their story. There could be the stigma that people will think that they're not in their right mind, and then maybe they're going to lose their whatever position of power or prestige that they have, so they may not be willing to step forward. Goes back to the question again, so why does the average Joe get possessed but somebody that's more prominent doesn't? And the, the key would be whether or not somebody is truly seeking help. That's the key thing, whether or not somebody's famous, whether or not they're not famous, Again, I don't go out and search for people that I believe to be Yeah, but possessed. if the spirit gets a hold of you, do you have any control? So if you're, even if you're famous and powerful, if the spirit gets a hold of you, you mean to tell me you're more powerful than the spirit? Nope. You know what I'm saying? It depends on the degree <laughs> that one's dealing with the demonic. Because something of the person always remains free. That's why even somebody that's possessed could ask for help. It's not total. There is something that's called a... I like that he's getting mad. He's like, well, um, excuse me, this is my expertise. This is my area of expertise. Like He's getting a little short with Patrick. Yeah. For not, well, like you put him on the red side. For too. not immediately <laughs> trusting him about his expertise of like exorcism. Possession. Where somebody takes their free will and they unite their free will completely with the demonic. So there never would be any manifestations then. The fact that there are manifestations would indicate that there's still an internal battle, there's still a struggle that's taking place. But it could be that somebody is possessed, but because they've resigned their free will to the will of the devil. There is no manifestation. There's no battle to take place. Yeah, yeah but if, if the devil is so strong, why, is he have, why does he have a hard time getting a hold of other people that are in? Bro, he doesn't understand. The priest is saying that, the priest is saying that, no, rich people get possessed too. They just don't ask for help, right? Isn't that what he's saying? Yeah, yeah Because basically. they have too much to lose, whereas like poor people don't have as much to lose, so they do get... Uh, so they do ask for help, and that's why he's always like exercising poor people. Except for Patrick da Pre Bed David, bleh, I can't even talk. He he doesn't give a fuck. He's like, no, but but why won't the rich people ask? Why why why? Do, and, and by the way, to say that maybe we don't know about it. When you're famous, we know all your business. You know, the people that get criticism is fame. Like you know, some people want to go. Oh, I'd love to. Go out there and become successful like that guy or this guy or that guy. And I'd love to have, you know, be a basketball player and get all the fame. I'd love to be a Hollywood star. But the moment you go there, all your business is everyone's business. Hey, this person's brother did this. Patrick Mahomes' brother went through this. Oh, Patrick Tom Brady's going through this in his, you know, issue. That's why he took a break. That person's going through this. I mean, because even when you're, you can't talk by yourself. Somebody's going to. All right, it's boring. All right. Yeah, no. So I, I want to give you the gifts I got you, bro. Okay. I want to give you the gifts that I got you here. Dude, okay. this is my favorite fit, dude. He's so, these guys always wear the skin tight suits, like with their fucking, like, it's just bad tailoring for yeah. the most part. But I love that they, they love rocking that because they're like, oh, I worked out. Like, I yeah. need to show. Yeah. That looks so fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Um, His so arm is falling asleep. For me, uh, I got five of them. Let me see if all five of them are here. That's a lot. Yeah, let me see if I got That's a lot. Uh, did he bring
thing. The other one is well. Oh, he's outside, I think. Huh? I don't know which, I don't know which is outside. There's a box. The Sam, one. if you're watching, the, 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 it's a small box. Yeah. yeah, if you can bring that one in, that'd be great. Uh, first one is... Okay, so I'm betting myself. I think you're going to love one of them. I hope it goes in your comedy club. Okay. Okay. I think uh, the other ones are going to be like whatever because you could buy it yourself. But then the other two, I think one of them may make it on the wall. It's a competition because you got like 100 pieces sitting around that's not on the wall. Okay. Okay. So we'll Can see what's going to happen. Give First the of all, fucking gift, Patrick. So you're a Jimi Hendrix guy, right? I yes. think you're a Jimi Hendrix yes. guy. Perfect. I, I got this. I, I, I his We looked up to see what we can do with Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix did a, Mont Blanc did a special Jimi Hendrix pen that while you're sitting here writing <laughs> stuff, I know you're probably not a big guy that you care about having a fancy pen or not, but we got you the special uh, limited edition uh, Mont Blanc pen with Jimi Hendrix. I hope you like it. Sure okay? Like it. So Fucking that's one. Two. Shop ass I think uh, when I think yeah. about personalities <laughs> that kind of push the envelope a, a little bit, Jimi Hendrix on uh, presidents in the past. Yeah, Joe Rogan famously writes a lot. Too. Yeah. So like this is a really good gift for him, I think. He's what gonna you, love this. Think about all the opportunities with the pen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, maybe you'll sign the best deal of your life with yeah. the Jimi Hendrix pen. I mean, people are saying like Mont Blacks are expensive as fuck. I know okay, they but are. they're rich guys, dude. Who gives I, right, a fuck? I mean, like even I, I I they're like it, it'll be like fifteen hundred dollars for a pen, but at the same time, a pen can cost fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars. If it has a picture of Jimi Hendrix on it, that's still like something you would buy at a gift shop. <laughs> like it's tacky. I don't. I don't care. Yeah. Ask that we're anti-establishment people that push the envelope. What? One of the names you think about, you think about a guy named Andrew Jackson. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I. I. This took me a minute to find this, but this is a letter written by Andrew Jackson, president, signed at the bottom. Wow with coa and he is known as the first ever anti-establishment president minus the founding fathers so i hope you like this this represents that aspect of you okay so that's this part now next one you've gone this down the rabbit hole with john f kennedy assassination what happened there what happened wait he's like oh, wait, why is he why does he have thematic gifts like i'm so yeah. confused is he trying to like fuck joe rogan <laughs> Dude. This is so weird. Yeah, this Into is all this other stuff. I said, let me see what we can find with this. This took us a minute to find as well. <laughs> this piece, Joe, is the actual... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Where am I supposed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Signed by Gerald Ford. Okay, the letter to the right is the Warren Commission. Then he had... Bro, this is the ugliest framing of all time. It's gaudy. It's very yeah. This is so like, like what the fuck is this gift, dude? This is <laughs> awful. He <laughs> just random picture of Lee Harvey Oswald in there. This is so bad. The autograph of Jack Ruby. Then you got the autograph of Lee Harvey Oswald, and you got the autograph of John F. Kennedy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 